think that you ought to see today that you do have a chance to be special. You do have a chance to be special. We got an awful lot of work to do. It appeared to me out there today on our running game and getting some things solved there. And uh, I don't know exactly what all the problems were. But you see that we have some talent and ability and, and, and we'll be able to do some things with, with the passing game. Uh, but we got to we got to get stronger with our running game because it was it lacked a little bit to be desired and you can't mean there comes a time when you know when you can, it can't be all finesse it comes with when you got to get Joe to Joe on cheek to cheek and and we got to get a little tougher in that in that respect. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Foods, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Phil Snow. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, the Tigers defeated the Longhorns 31-3. to By my count, that's your fifth time as a player and a coach to uh, go against the Horns, Coach. Finally won one. Congratulations. Well, uh, you're exactly right. I, we had, I had lost them as a player in 58. Uh, I didn't talk about a lot about that losing to us so much. But, uh, it, was a, it was a big day for our Auburn family yesterday. Mm. Phil, I thought that... Uh, I haven't heard anybody that didn't have a good time. Uh, the stadium was nearly full. And uh, the Texas game uh, meant a lot to Auburn. Uh, not so much uh, winning the game, but being able to play Texas and, and uh, uh, open the new addition to the stadium. And the things that, that uh, were surrounding the game being played other than just the football game itself. And, um, I, I think that uh, it, it was a, it was good for us, uh, and I told the players going in the game that we'd find out a lot about our football team, and uh, we, you know, we got the two early breaks and got the two scores, and <clears throat> then our offense struggled through the second quarter, and uh, our defense did what they were supposed to do in holding Texas kind of at bay, and uh, in the second half we come back and we get a couple more and and and. Uh, you know, our defense is, is going to be such that uh, uh, people are going to move the football a little bit against us. And, and uh, we don't expect to hold every game to a minimum. But uh, the thing that we want to do is if we don't turn the football over, which we did yesterday, uh, make them go a long ways and bend a little but don't break. And that's what they did. They really <laughs> did. It was a, really a remarkable defensive performance. And... We will talk to many of those defenders now as we go into the post-game dressing room, starting with the Auburn secondary. Well, they put you in some pressure situations in the first half. Yeah, they did. He's put some lot of pressure situations on the goal line, but came to pretty good. Just before the half, you make two plays on the goal line. Yeah. You almost intercept, and then you do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was looking for it. I was looking for the same thing again, and luckily they did. And I picked it off this time. We just came out and did our duties, and you know we had fun out there. Feel pretty good about that. Got you one today. Picked up where you left off from last year. Yeah, it was great. Without fun, putting pressure on you know all we had to do was sit back and things were gonna happen great for us. Uh, they, had a, they have a great team. I mean, he's a great quarterback. I mean, he was poised. You know, he had the pressure put on him. You know, he's supposed to throw the ball up more than he wanted to. I'm not taking anything away from uh, Texas. You know, they're a fine, um, they're a fine bunch, but um, we are too. <laughs> yeah, they was rather big, real big. And uh, I... I knew that I couldn't lock up with him too much, so I was trying to act quickly. Yeah, I think the secondary must be the highlight of the, the game. I haven't watched it on film yet, like I said, but uh, for them to throw that ball that many times and for us to be as consistent as we were, they had to play an outstanding game. And the linebackers. If they don't get satisfied, they can be something. They sure can. How do you get so much bigger than you are? I don't know. 
I guess he just did all the meat from me off the table. <laughs> Y'all been waiting on this day for a good long while, right? A long time. Something we look for and we all pray about. He patch protected well today. Maybe a little some work on the run. But overall, what do you think? Overall, I think I have a pretty good game. I think we, we basically we control both of the two techniques, which was uh, the main concern going into the game. The big, tall timber, huh? Yeah, the big, tall timber. <laughs> you know, offensive line was talking, we had no penalties on pass rush, holding. And our uh, last scrimmage, I think we had seven. So we've come a long way. We've still got a long way to go. Of course, that's because Searles' hand was taken. He couldn't hold. Right? <laughs> yeah, Searles got a club, and he can't hold, so we didn't get any. <laughs> Auburn has uh, switched over. They're winning games, throwing the football. That's a, that's a switch. Yeah, that's a switch. That's just come from hard work. We worked real hard on our passing game, and everybody wanted it to work for our offense, so that's what we decided to do. Well, you got a little taste today. How'd it taste? Um, it's, we show potential, but we got to learn a lot more. And if everything go right, we get better. And the passing game was uh, really accepted today. Yeah, we worked, you know, we worked real hard on the on the passing game, and it finally showed up a little today. And if we keep working with the offense and the running game, I think we should have the, sort of the same results. Auburn and Coca-Cola, take one. The war is a game with the Coca-Cola wave. Stay right here, just don't believe Auburn's going to victory. Colonial Bank has a great way to show your Auburn spirit, the Auburn Spirit Card. Anyone can apply for an Auburn Spirit MasterCard or Visa at a 15.5 annual percentage rate. The annual fee is $12, but there's no fee for Auburn Alumni Association members. Every time you use your cards, the Alumni Association benefits. Show your Auburn spirit with Auburn Spirit Credit Cards. Get all the details at Colonial Bank. then that will be the largest crowd ever to see a football game in the state of Alabama. Well, it was a, as a, the governor, and we had uh, some guests from the NCAA, uh, Dr. Sheets, and uh, Dr. Bailey was in town, and uh, the commissioner. Well represented, weren't you? Absolutely. It was, and it was a great day for football. I was hoping for a day of about 100 degrees <laughs> to, to, so we could wear them down a little bit, but didn't get that great play right here by Roy Hunter, and we, that's the best job we did all year covering all day covering kicks because that was probably the most disappointing thing and is come out trying to run a quarterback draw and andre and family <laughs> tracy and benji and nate hill nate hill good <laughs> rush uh -huh. andre draws a crowd and those four right there having fun playing uh, uh, edward yeah. phillips and kurt crane linebacker there's pressure by andre causes the interception makes him throw the ball up he couldn't get what he wanted on it and uh, Alvin Briggs comes up with his first interception of the year. I think he had six, five or six last year. And mm -hmm. Alvin Briggs and Kevin Porter have just been really a great block right there, picking up that linebacker by uh, James Joseph. And the offensive line looked like he did a great job of protecting Jeff all day long yesterday. And I can't say enough about the. Uh, there's another fine block by James Joseph. Too. <laughs> and uh, as Reggie Ware takes it into the end zone. Picks up right where he left off last year. There's good pressure by Andre and sacked by Robert Goff. <coughs> Played two freshmen in the defensive line some yesterday. There's another fine play by Robert. They uh, they had a tough time running in there. And of course, they, they, they hit us a couple of cruises. There's Andre sacking the quarterback and causing the fumble. And, and uh, Robert Goff comes up with it. And, first of I guess the second big break and we come back and we take this one in as uh, Jeff throwing to lawyer Tillman and great play right here our team has worked awfully hard on screens and draws and trying to do things to complement our passing game and hit Jeff hits uh, Vincent Harris and gets some good blocks Rodney Garner, <coughs> Rodney Garner and, and uh, Stacy Dunn gets the last guy going into the end zone. You can right see him there. right there. It puts him in the end zone. Um, offensive staff has done an excellent job 
Pat Sullivan, Larry Blakeney, and James Daniels, Neil Callaway, and uh, Jay Jacobs, all working with the offensive football team because we got a lot of youngsters there. Fine play by Craig Ogletree and, and uh, Edward Phillips. Stafford, you know, had, had to hurry his throws all day long. And I can't say enough about Craig Staples. Craig is a walk-on, playing without a scholarship. Took Shan Morris's place, first time he'd ever started a game. Big play by Benji Rowland. And, and uh, Quentin Riggins, Riggins looked like he had some plays yesterday. And uh, running a toss here to, to Reggie Ware. Texas is now they're a big, strong, physical football team up front defensively. And uh, the way they play the defense and their secondary and all this it's tough to run against them and that guy right there you know we had some missed tackles right there probably the coolest thing we did yesterday was cover kicks and uh, that's coach davis and myself's category and we're going to get better at it this week kind of we're momentum gonna, change right gonna, through here right well this is where texas started controlling the ball fine play by tracy rocker we're going to get better at covering kicks or we're going to change some faces on those covering teams one of the two and uh but it's no excuse because we've got talent on that. we just got to work hard at it and take more pride in it. And, uh, we're going to develop a, a great kicking game. And this is a fine play right here. And, and, and almost came out of that with it. And, and the Texas guy got his hand on the ball and knocked it loose. And again, they back in business down there close. And, but our defense again rises to the occasion and, and uh, stops them. And this is a big, big series right here. They got the ball knocking on our door right here. We're just having kicked the field goal. And, and uh, if they can make it a 10, great containment here of the quarterback. Great play right there on the part of Kevin Porter. Amen. Fourth and one now. <coughs> Fourth and one. And you're going to see Kurt Crane come over the top and knock the ball right there. Mm -hmm. Knock the ball loose from, from Metcalf. And Alvin Briggs recovers it. And, had a lot of big plays by the a lot of folks on defense. Jeff throwing to Lawyer Tim, and Lawyer almost yeah. came out of there with this one. He, he he went to the game nursing a little thigh pull and was you know was less than 100 percent. Jeff again throwing to Freddie Way again, getting the ball off of our goal line. And uh, Jeff is just uh, you know, he, he looked in, in the game yesterday just like he's looked in practice to me. I mean he's, he's been very very accurate and. I thought he made one poor throw yesterday uh, coming off of our end zone, out of our end zone, and, and uh, had a deep pass. He didn't quite get off quick enough, so he had the guy beat. But outside of that, I didn't see him do a lot wrong. It's Quentin Riggins and uh, Lamar Rogers down there covering that kick. And again, we just, we've got to take more pride in that uh, punt coverage team. as Edward Phillips and Kirk Crane. Fernando Horn, number 77, big freshman, and as yeah. Tracy and Edward, and yeah. I hear that, uh, have fun to watch play. Carlo Cheatham had some big plays at free safety for us, and Benji uh, just fought through that block and made it. <coughs> Here's a little freshman, Harry Mose. First just, play. Yes, First and, and, and uh, I was, he made a great run with it, and you know, he was so upset about it, and <laughs> I told him he just got to put that one behind him because he's going to have a lot of big runs. There's another fine play by Craig Staples, pressure on the quarterback. And you won't see many times when the quarterback is not running for his life in this this uh, thing. And that sure helps the secondary, doesn't it, Coach? Fine, fine lick right there by Kurt Crane. It helps the secondary, and, and uh, you're going to see a, an outstanding interception right here by... Out there under pressure, that was that was Tracy Rocker had a hold of him, and, and Craig Staples comes up with the, with the interception. Here's Tracy gets him right here. What a big play right. this was! And the ball was juggled, and watch, he just goes for the football and takes it away, <laughs> and oh, comes man. away with the interception. Because they make watch it Kurt Crane hug the referee right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've ever seen that in a football <laughs> game in my life. I mean, and. Uh, <laughs> I guess it, uh, I don't know what brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> if they make it 14 to 10 at the half, it is, a, it's going to be a ball game. Well, you know, we just, uh, we didn't do anything to give them any encouragement. And, uh, of course, defensively, that's what the great defensive football teams do. We'll be back in just a minute. When Jimmy Rain of Great Southern Wood asked me to endorse his product, Osmo, I said, heck yes. 
And here's why. Coach, let me tell you why Osmosis is the best. We start with the finest quality southern pine timber. Osmosis is the purest wood preservative in the world, 99.9% .9 pure. We give a 40-year warranty with every piece of wood we treat, and that's the best guarantee you can get. Osmosis, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest snack company, Golden Flake. Just go anywhere Golden Flake snacks are sold and fill out your entry form. Imagine cruising to an Auburn game in your specially customized football van, the War Eagle. And the lucky fan who wins shouldn't be too surprised. Auburn fans are used to winning. Van, courtesy of Edward Chevrolet and Custom Creation Vans. as you can remember it's been part of your dreams part of your sunshine and we suspect it always will be does anybody know you at the bank at colonial bank we believe banking is a people business here in clanton and in every office from hustle to mobile colonial bankers are local people we want to get to know you and serve you better Bank at Colonial and bank with someone you know. Pat, Doc. It's a great feeling. Colonial Bank. Auburn University graduated over 4,000 students last year, and they expect this year to be just as busy. Steve Beverly has a report from Auburn. In the recently ended summer quarter alone, Auburn handed out 960 degrees, which put the university over the 4,000 mark in diplomas for 1986-87. This year, Auburn expects to equal its enrollment of last year, around 19,400. And President Jim Martin estimates the academic quality of those students to be about the same as last year's. And we do anticipate the ACT score average for the entering freshman class to be approximately what it was uh, for the past year, approximately 23.5. Just three weeks ago, artist conceptions were unveiled for the new hotel conference center across from the Auburn campus. The center is a big part of Auburn's expanding future. In order to assist us strengthen and improve our ability to develop our continuing education programs and to have a facility that we can utilize uh, very efficiently to host workshops, seminars, and short courses. Auburn's fall classes begin September 24th. From Auburn, this is Steve Beverly reporting. What a day it was, uh, Pat Dye. Uh, if Texas doesn't send back the, uh, the, the large number of tickets they did and, and the weather is pretty, I think it would have been a, a, a sellout. Well, it's been, it would have been close, uh, close to, to have close to 80,000 or 80,000 or whatever it was at the game uh, with a, a threatening rain. Yeah. Was amazing to me because I was concerned. I heard it drizzling a little bit early Saturday morning, and I said, "Oh my goodness, it's mm -hmm. going to keep the crowd away." But I tell you, it didn't keep them away. And the Auburn spirit was never any stronger. And uh, it was just a lot of fun for everybody involved. And <clears throat> now that's a catch and a fumble, and we don't get it. I don't like the idea of him catching the ball, but Carlo Cheatham. Made a great play on it. There's another one by Robert Goff, and <coughs> they kind of gave that center a tough time yesterday. Oh, my. Look at Metcalf that. Metcalf, and Robert Goff I, guess, I guess that's where Robert was talking earlier about not getting locked up with him. That's a fine play by Kurt Crane. <coughs> Kurt yeah. Crane and Edward Phillips are giving us great linebacker play, and Quentin Riggins is playing well at linebacker. This is your third possession in the <coughs> third quarter, and you kind of get a little reckless and go after it on first down, here. Huh? Well, that's uh, Jeff throwing to Duke Donaldson, and we make the first down right there, fine running by Reggie Ware. And Jeff's going up top. This is a familiar sight here. Great catch. Look at that. I didn't like that. Hmm. This is one call for it. Been, that should have been tacked on 15 mm -hmm. yards right here. That stepped right in through his chest. Hmm. That, uh, no place in football for that. This is, uh, Alexander Wright. Coach Blakeney 
call it and it worked just like it did late last year. But the visit guy carrying it. Jim Thompson really had, downfield gonna get a big big block. Well he made a big block last year. And uh, watch Jim right here. It's a great shot of Jim. Jim is he can run. But he's one of the top athletes in the country at his position and uh, must have had a great day yesterday. There's that example of Freddie on the sideline. Two big plays and you got it in the end zone. See, I, I really think Ooh. we have more big play potential than we've ever had. There's Andre Bruce. You can see him coming hard. And wow. Andre's worked hard and it's, uh, he was at Edward Phillips. Mm -hmm. No, Quentin Riggins was the first guy there. They would kind of cleaned him up. <clears throat> Freddie returns punt for us. Has a good little return right here, but again, we, for us to have worked as hard as we've worked on the kitchen game, we didn't get the results out of it yesterday that we're going to get in the future because we're going to, uh, maybe, maybe we've best been talking about it and not whatever. Great play right here by James Joseph and good blocking and uh, Lawyer Pillman. Look at Walter Reeves downfield blocking that uh, strong safety and Lawyer Pillman made a great block to get him started and look at the people show up down there late. There's a catch that looks. And watch the right stiff there's a, Right there is look at Lawyer blocking number mm. 92. There's uh, John Hudson down there and John Hudson played with a badly sprained ankle yesterday and Stacy Searles played with a broken hand, and Rodney Garner, I saw him pin that two technique two or three times. And as a, there's John Eric, Hudson down there. Eric here. Floyd showing up down there, and there's a little delay pass we threw to the tight end, and look out now, we don't want to get a 15-yard penalty <laughs> for hitting late. Wynn Lyle comes in and kicks his field goal, makes it 24 to three, and uh, we, that's only delay a game penalty we got in the game is we didn't get to as uh pitching the Metcalf that guy right there has got Boy, he's a some kind of quickness and yes. running ability he got uh, two or three good runs late in the game but of course it was what the, I guess what you call alumni yardage well because and we would we, you know have a, look at that penetration and quickness right there and getting a the quarterback on the option before he can even get started Robert Goff Robert and Benji Rowland both alternated at nose guard and there's a fine play by Tracy Rocker and is pressure on the quarterback again going to the wrong side. <laughs> you yeah. get much done on Kevin's side over there. <clears throat> and then you get it intercepted when you throw it over to Alvin's side so they really don't have much choice. There's a little guy right there that I'm excited mm. about Greg Taylor and uh, this is his own opportunity yesterday but I think he'll provide some excitement for four, four, four years old. There comes Scooby. Alex Strong, Curtis Stewart. We played four tailbacks and four fullbacks yesterday. Is Jeff throwing to Alexander Wright and that number 16 there's the guy that said we didn't have any speed at wide out and they weren't very good. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I guess you don't shouldn't rub salt in the wounds no. but that guy right there probably can run faster than he can. Well, he looks it. like he's running away from him, so I guess he can run faster <laughs> than he can. Oh, my. Alexander's a guy that uh, didn't play a lot of high school football, but he's come on and worked real hard. He's in his third year. He's a third-year sophomore right now, and, and uh, we think he's got an outstanding future. So I think it overall, uh, feel we've got a lot of work to do with our running game. I'm, I'm, I'm tremendously proud of our uh Young folks in the offensive line, even though we we didn't we weren't w consistent with the running game yesterday, and uh, but uh, I think that that what took place with the uh, the kind of character that the guys that played hurt showed, and and overcoming the, the things that we've overcome, you know, if we get if we can get healthy and and get Vincent Jones back, and and with the the combinations that. Uh, uh, some kind of way we're gonna come up with a running game and that you're gonna have to have <coughs> sooner or later well if we can if we can run the football I know that we're more capable of throwing it than we've ever been if we can run the football in other words there comes a time when you need to line up and say we're gonna make a first down running the ball and be able to do it okay and we'll be uh, back in just a minute we'll we'll talk about we that. couldn't do that yesterday some people just can't remember quality people people who were good role models Auburn gave me lasting and meaningful friendships. Let's face it, Auburn folks are great.
An Auburn moment from the Auburn Alumni Association. University of Kansas comes in next Saturday, 6 o'clock start. Plenty of tickets. Get them this week and see the Auburn defense play Kansas, and we'll have the replay on Sunday. Thank you. September 18th through Sunday. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Food, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Phil Snow. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, Jordan-Hare Stadium and Auburn thumped the University of Kansas 49 to nothing. It was, uh, I don't think, ever in doubt, Coach Pat Dye. Well, I, I felt like that going into the game that uh, just based on what I'd seen in practice all week, it, uh, uh, that we would be ready to play and that I thought we'd be a better football team than we were against Texas. Um, and I think we were. It was a, you know, it was a game where, like you said, it was never in doubt from the very, very beginning. And, I, you know, our defense had control of the game, and our offense really had control of the game. And uh, I hope that, uh, you know, the things that took place out there should help us, I think, e even though, uh, you know, I don't care about beating anybody that bad for sure. But uh, especially the team's got a lot of work and uh, showed uh, tremendous improvement. Uh, we got to we got to, to run the football a lot and uh, a lot of new faces. Think, on yeah, the field. we well we played 73 players, Phil, and and uh, that was probably the biggest thrill I got out of the out of the game itself. Uh, playing so many of the youngsters that go out there and work every day and don't get the opportunity to play and and uh, see them go out and have a little fun on Saturday is is uh, was a big thrill for me. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, we held some players out of the game that uh, didn't play. And, uh, you know, right now we're still, we're still a little banged up. But, but uh, I hope within the next two weeks that we can be a healthier football team and get all the guys that uh, haven't played in the last couple of weeks, get them healthy and uh, have a good week and a half work because we're going to give them off till Tuesday. And, and uh, Need all the troops to go to Knoxville. Right. Okay, let's go into the uh, Auburn dressing room now, and we'll talk first with Auburn quarterback Jeff Berger about the balanced offense that we saw. Yes. We, you know, it was a little different. We wanted our defense to go out there and create, create something happening for us, and this week we really wanted the offense to get some confidence behind us, and that first drive was real important for us. The, the attack was more balanced. Than yeah, it was a lot more balanced, and um, yeah, the, the line did a good job of uh, blocking, even in the run situations, and a uh, good job pass blocking, and uh, they just wanted those nights where we did a lot of things right. You laid it up there just right. Huh? Yes, the play was called 60, and that's where all the receivers run a go route, and Jeff threw the ball dead on time. We really wanted to run the ball. Coach Dad emphasized that all this week that we were going to run, and we were going to make the run go. And um, we came out there running, as you can see. What was your play in the scoring play? Um, that play was a toss, a sweet play, and um, Harry Moses gave a great block, and all the line just got out there and just made good key blocks, and just they they go down the sideline. Yeah. He punted the ball, and then when I turned the corner there, it just seemed like we had all kind of blue jerseys. When I was running up through there, you could hear some licks. So they were laying some great blocks, and um, 
and then I got down they were all kind of holes as far as going straight or cutting back and I thought the best way was to cut back and then somebody made another great block there I hadn't you know I have to sit on film as far as the blocks and stuff but they were some great blocks in the punt return now give me a critique of 39 tonight 39 well he played fairly well I mean yeah I'll talk to him after the game after the game I wouldn't want to criticize him in all in front of all his fans and the public <laughs> I got you. what did 39 think when the guy throws the pass on fourth down well um you know whenever you play a team like that and it comes down to fourth down and we felt like coach Dodd talked to us about you know look for something that you normally wouldn't see and uh it shocked me you know they threw it and Staples came up and just made a great play and stripped that guy and uh I think that was a big key of the game because it got the ball to our offense and they started clicking and put the points on the board the stadium kind of a wet damp evening I don't believe it rained a drop during the game it just it rained all day <laughs> and uh, the field was in good shape and we put down a drainage system in our field this summer, and, and it was just uh, perfect playing conditions, really. A little humid, but not bad. Hair, hair mows the turns opening, kicked off, and um, get it started. And just a little quick screen to Duke Donaldson. Jeff had a great night throwing the football, yeah. and nearly, nearly perfect. His was key first down on opening drive, tossed to James Joseph, and good blocking Rodney Garner. Stacy Searles, he throwing <coughs> Alexander Wright. Really doesn't make much difference which one of those wide receivers are in the ball game. We can throw to all of them. They all good. He's throwing a little screen pass to Vincent Harris. That's the same play he scored on against Texas. And uh, take it down inside the 10. Great call right there by Larry Blakeney. I didn't like it when he called it. But I'm just as bad sometimes down there on the sidelines as the fans are up in the, in the stands <laughs> about second guessing a call, but that was a third and a long situation on the goal line down there, and I kind of wanted to put the ball in the air, but Larry made the call on the draw, and it worked perfect. Just straight ahead <coughs> blocking, and uh, Joseph did the rest. Great coverage right at Roy Hunter and uh, Lamar Rogers and Perry Reed down on the great play right here by Benji Rowland, and Edward Phillips and Alvin Mitchell over there, and uh, our defensive front looks like here's a uh, gadget playoff with kick, and our, uh, Greg Staples comes over and knocks him loose from the ball, and Steve Brown gets on it. They ruled it was a catch <coughs> after talking about it a little bit. Well, we should have had him covered to begin with, but we had to block on him, and, and um, Kevin just didn't see him. And again, Jeff just, I mean, just really throwing the ball well. Hits uh, Alexander right again. <laughs> now, you're going to see a great, great catch right here by Freddie Way again. One-handed reaches over the guy, and the guy actually had his other hand. Watch him, watch him grab Freddie's left hand right here. <laughs> see him grab his left hand? Grabbed his right. left hand, Freddie caught it in his right hand. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's Walter Reeves. Pretty good group there. Walter and Scott Bolton and Freddie. We're, we're working awful hard still to, to be a complete football team. There's good coverage again on the kick. Steve Brown, Smokey Hodge, Perry Reed. Chris Johnson had a little more oomph into the... <coughs> As the entire defensive line right here. Good pressure, and they dropped a lot of passes last night and, and you know, short stuff. And it was going deep. Alexander Wright, Jeff had perfect timing on the throw, and, and Alexander just ran by the guy. And if we're going to throw the football, that's good blocking up there now by Brad Johnson, and Jeff had good protection. Looked like we had good protection nearly all night long. He was 12 for 15 on the night for 189 yards. Well, to, to, in order to be a, 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 an effective passing football team, you've got to throw the ball deep and threaten them deep. And, and there's John Hudson and Brad Johnson and and Rodney Garner and Stacy Searles. Offensive line, Carlo Cheatham. Good play, good tackle. I like the way Coach Dennis has got our defensive backs attacking people when they catch a football out there. Watch this one. The thing hit the ground. I guess it might have might have frozen for a minute. Great block by Kurt, <coughs> Kurt Crane. I don't know who that was? I don't. I, I don't know. It might have been Steve Brown. I think it was. And and. Uh, 
There's another good last smoky hustling right there to get out there. It pulls up a little bit there, and then as Pig goes into the Robert Goff, affection, affectionately known as Pig. pig. <laughs> <coughs> Jim, Jim Thompson patting Freddie on the head. And Probably a special game for Pig because he There's had another outstanding on play on the specialty teams right here. Second turnover on the specialty teams. That was uh, Smokey Hodge, and I think John Wiley actually got his hand in there, and Jimmy Clummer comes up with it on the turnover on the kicking game. Mm. It doesn't take us long to get this one in there. <coughs> Again, I think that uh, Larry Blakeman and Coach Sullivan calling the game, and the Coach Callaway is in the press box with him, helping with us calling the running game. And Curtis Stewart ran well last night and had an outstanding touchdown run call back. His good blocking, good hole. Walter Reeves and, and uh, James Joseph and running the right side of the right side of the offensive line. Reeves and Searles, that's not a bad place to run. Quentin Riggins and Alvin Mitchell on the stop. <coughs> I think they made two first downs the, the first half. And uh, four yards rushing in the first half. Well, and and uh, here's another outstanding return. You'd like to get the kicking teams, especially the teams uh, to where folks are scared to kick the ball against. Reggie Slack now. As Reggie throwing to Lee Mark Sellers down in Bruton, Alabama. Lee Mark has improved and gotten better. Here's Reggie again. This time he's throwing to Scott Bolton. Scott had three catches. Well, Scott didn't catch a ball last week and has good running. He runs up in there and gets in a little traffic and just pops out of there running and I don't think there's any doubt that we <coughs> a lot better. And we throw an interception right here. Uh, this this will be a great coaching deal for Reggie because he could have run the football in the end zone for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Of course, we would have penalty had been called back anyway, but we wouldn't have turned it over. David Rocker and, and uh, Quentin Riggins. And good pressure right here by Andre Bruce. <coughs> the meet. There's a new Looks number like out there. 13. D'Amico Anderson. There's Kurt Crane. <laughs> Guy wants to get a good look. Here's the option, pitching it to Harry Mose. Harry's made some outstanding blocks in the game. He's just, he's turned it over in both of the first games. He's got to start taking better care of the football. <coughs> he's going to be a... He's got some fine, quickness. Fine, fine back. Mm. There's, again, good pressure on the quarterback by Andre, and they run the Utah, I guess, some kind of pass there. A variation thereof. Craig Staples and Kurt Crane, again, there's good pressure. Edward Phillips on the side. Mm. And the beautiful sunset on the plane as the half ends. 35 nothing Auburn leading. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest company. Colonial Auburn fans, all Auburn people can be really proud of this newly expanded Jordan-Hare Stadium. It is really a football uh, palace and in a large sense it, recommend, it, it represents the coming together of academics and athletics. Steve Beverly has a report. The excitement of an Auburn Saturday. An enlarged stadium with new sky boxes. And a time to honor the families of Ralph Shug Jordan and Cliff Hare. At the dedication of the new East Side Upper Deck, President Jim Martin said there's no better way to demonstrate the relationship between academics and athletics than by naming its stadium for a coach and a chemistry professor. A former Auburn president continues to spearhead the union between the playing field and the classroom. Dr. Wilford Bailey is now president of the NCAA, and he says colleges are making the academic-athletic marriage fall into better perspective. We've turned the corner on uh, academic standards. I think we will look in the uh, years immediately ahead to uh, improving, increasing the academic requirements. Dr. Bailey is a staunch advocate of the classroom taking the lead role in the delicate balancing act of the student athlete. The fundamental uh, solution to the problems that impede athletics uh, is integrity, uh, individual or institutional integrity. 
From Auburn, this is Steve Beverly reporting. Dr. Wilfred Bailey, the president of the NCAA, and uh, for the opening game, uh, Dick Schultz, the new executive director who will take office very soon now, was uh, at Auburn. That was a big day with Dr. Right. Shuler uh, there, too. You know, Phil, the, the thing that uh, the fans and the people come to watch your youngsters display the athletic ability out there on the field, and, and uh, the Lord has blessed them with that. Yeah. But uh, the real, uh, in real life, the quality of the education and the experience and the and the, the rewards that you get from going to college uh, are far greater than just playing just playing the sport itself because you can't play football forever and you got to depend on on your the background that you got from a, a educational standpoint and and the foundation that you build there to live the rest of your life on. And that's why it's so important for these youngsters, not only in college, but uh, in junior high school and high school and everywhere, to get the best background and preparation that they can possibly get uh, from an educational standpoint to, to uh, sustain them the rest of their life. And uh, the NCAA and, and college athletics around the country is, is certainly putting a tremendous emphasis on education. and. It's the greatest thing that's happened to football since I've been involved in the game. Well spoken from an uh, academic All-American in his playing days. Uh, let's move on now and get into the second half. And Coach, you had a luxury here. You had a 35-point lead, which affords you a chance to uh, see a lot of people you wanted to see in a game situation. Well, Phil, I think that, uh, you know, because at that time you're not concerned about losing a football game. You're concerned about getting somebody hurt. But you don't want the team to go out and lose their concentration and play sloppy and and just uh, get penalties and that kind of thing. As a, we opened with Jeff, of course, coming back at quarterback, we wanted him to get one more good drive in the, in the uh, second half. <coughs> uh, this uh, Duke, for some reason, Donaldson just quit running now. I don't know why he quit running, and Jeff, I think, would have been perfect on the pass. <coughs> but we still play in defense, Clinton Riggins and <coughs> Rogers. Lamar Rogers. <coughs> you think Tennessee's numbers. coming up got something to do with me coughing, Phil? I think it may have, Coach. Well, it may. I think you may be right. <laughs> but anyway, we are still having fun playing defense and almost interception right there by Perry Reed. And uh, as two guys that I hope will be back for Tennessee, Frank Thomas and Lawyer Tillman, One's a tight end and watch. one looks like a tight end, but he's a well, wide they're, they're both great football players. <coughs> you're, right in the, you're right in the game right here. We've got you down on the field close. The, uh, it was a nice play by Jeff right there and a good kick by uh, Reggie Ware, and that's a key third down play. Jeff throwing the ball to James Joseph and, and uh, Shotgun. Sustaining, the, sustaining the drive. Here again, we get a pass interference call here, and, and uh, again, you know, we've got tremendous confidence throwing the ball to our receivers because they will get in position to catch it again, quick screen, throwing it out to, to Duke Donaldson. And again, I mentioned we've got six receivers right now that are playing and playing extremely well. Great block right there by Reggie. Look at there, he's got the guy in the end zone. He must have blocked him 15 yards. <laughs> Reggie Ware and, and uh, Reeves, I think Walter so. Reeves and, and uh, Jim Thompson and Reggie puts it in there. <coughs> We're trying to build a lot of pride in our running backs and you can see uh, Eric Floyd coming off the ball and Walter Reeves again. But our backs blocking uh, Phil always got the key block at the point of attack. Mm. Our fullbacks either blocking for the tailback or tailbacks blocking for the fullback and Almost touchdown right there, uh, D'Amico Anderson. We playing all these young guys now. D'Amico's a, is a, a freshman or a sophomore, I guess. Came in under Proposition 48 last year and, and uh, has done well academically. And uh, we think he's going to be an outstanding football player. Look at this play. Great play right here by Eric Ramsey. <coughs> Got some young guys that, that just need experience in the secondary, and they're getting better all the time. It was a great play right there by another one of those youngsters, uh, Perry Reed. Mm. And John Wiley is back there. Sean Smith played last night. Jimmy Clemmer played a lot at uh, one of the halfbacks. 
is uh, Harry Mose. Died to <laughs> Harry, you, you, you got to get your fingers over that football <laughs> and, and lock it in there. So Vincent Harris played played better last night, and, and uh, Vincent is is uh, a guy that we need to. He's an excellent run right here. You see him take that ball and, and get it placed and set it away, and good blocking by Harry. <coughs> Harry Mose and you see it again. Watch Harry tie up two guys uh, on the corner here. Rob Selby and, and uh, Lee Mark Sellers. Yep, got both of them. Jim Thompson gets his pushed on out of the way. Just uh, <laughs> at, uh, hey, Coach Casey and uh, Tim Jesse. Tim uh, released from, look at the block right there by Harry Moe. There was another good one. I tell you what, the little old guy has, Jerry Helms, in that center. <coughs> the little freshman doesn't like courage. No, he doesn't. Curtis Stewart. There's a good block out front. Looks like out there by everyone getting cut down downfield by... Uh, Alex Strong. Alex Strong and Greg Taylor. So in case Reggie slacks to, to Robert or lie. Reggie has Robert a cannon, a, doesn't he? he he's got a strong it. arm. There's a little guy right there again blocking, getting around the corner. He's getting Pat Oster. Kevin Collins and Anthony Brown. There's Kevin right there, number 71. Anthony Brown played last night. Joe McNeil. Got a lot of folks in the, in the game. And, uh, Jerry Helms. Oh, it, uh, we played 73 kids. And again, you know, those guys go out and work every week. And they've been through two-a-days and three-a-days and four-a-days and practice. And, and a lot of them are, are, are running Kansas or Texas. The next week they'll be running Tennessee's defense against uh, our offense and defensive teams. And, and uh, just great to ha see them have an opportunity to play. We'll be back in just a minute. <coughs> the Smoky Mountain Auburn Club will have a pep rally Friday night, the 25th, 7 o'clock at the Knoxville Hilton, Tennessee, coming up in two weeks, Coach. I hope that our people won't fall into the trap Tennessee put us in up there two years ago. They sent reporters down here and stayed a week, and, and I've never seen the paper filled as, with as much propaganda in my life as it was when we got to Knoxville. And the and, uh, best thing we can do is just get ready to go to Knoxville and not say anything about the game, but just be sure we're ready to play when we get there. Okay, the Tigers will take a couple of days off and begin their preparation on Wednesday, and they will have a week and a half to get ready for Tennessee. And we'll be back in... Two weeks with the replay of Auburn, Tennessee, the beginning of the SEC season. Service safeguards the star. I'm mighty proud of you for coming back. We got down and we came back and we did have what we had to do to go ahead in the ball game and showed a lot of class, a lot of poise, and actually had a chance at the end there. Again, it's kind of a frustrating thing for me, and I know it is for you. We will learn something about our football team from today, though, because today is the first real, real challenge that we've had, and uh, it, it was a tie. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Food, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Bill Snow. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Uh, as he said in the dressing room, Pat Dye, it was a tie. That's what it was, 20 to 20, Tennessee and Auburn. Well, I guess it was a great football game, Phil. If I you, guess it was. You, if you want a close one, and, and uh, there was a lot of uh, good things in the, in the game on both sides. Uh, you know, I give Tennessee a lot of credit uh, for coming back. Uh, 
I give our kids a lot of credit for coming back. When we got down, we took it and methodically drove the ball, what, 80 yards or whatever to right. to score and go ahead in the game. And then we came back and got another touchdown and went up by 10. And then Tennessee comes back and and, uh, and ties the game. And and uh, we come back at the end with a chance to, to win it. And the time just runs out on us. And, you know, there's... Uh, the frustrating thing in the last minute and 20 seconds there is that, that uh, you know, Jeff did a great job of executing our two-minute offense. Uh, we used a couple of timeouts right there that were questionable and, and uh, probably could have been prevented. And then, of course, the thing at the end was a, was a ball and then the clock running down and we couldn't get the last snap off. And, uh, you know, uh, I could be critical of the officials or whatever it was it was I, I think if you look at it on tape Freddie actually made a first down on the play and and the and clock should have stopped and the clock should have stopped but but uh, with the with the uh, emotions in the stadium at that time and and uh, you know everybody's human yeah right <laughs> and uh, especially with 95,000 well, well I mean it, it's uh, it was a situation where we had our opportunities to win the football game and didn't Tennessee probably had their opportunities to win it and didn't, and both teams played hard, and, uh, you know, it ended up in a tie. And it's, I think that, um, I think that we'll learn something from that football game if, if we, we got the kind of kids that I think we do, then uh, we're going to be a much better football team in the future. Uh, I said going into the game, and I still say that uh, we're not close to being as good a football team right now as we got a chance to be later on in the year. All right, let's go into the dressing room now and uh, talk to some of the players. A little subdued, as you might expect. Did their defense surprise you? No, not at all. they got a good defense. They're playing with confidence. Uh, they're a good football team. We, knew they're, we know they're a good football team. We knew that before we came up here. Um, and they, di they did what they had to, um, to win the football game, even though they went for the tie. Uh, you all did get some things done inside today when you had to. Well, yeah, I think a lot of questions got answered about our running game. And uh, I thought we did what we had to do to win, offensively and defensively. And uh, you're right, it's the most frustrating thing I've ever been through. Sometimes like this, you just rather, hey, I'd rather, you know, either either you win or you, you lose. And rather than I have a tired title, I'll tell you anything. And the bottom line is we didn't come up with the big plays when we needed it. And uh, we stopped them a couple times, but when, when we needed to stop, we didn't stop them. On the 55 yarder, did you think you could make it? Um, yeah, I thought I could make it. Um, I just told myself to uh, just kick it like it was an extra point and uh, not uh, tent stuff any on it. And uh, I just kicked it smooth and went through. It's disappointing. You know, I, um, I was looking forward to, um, to going all the way with no no uh, ties or losses, but um, we still got a chance to do to win SEC, and um, this is gonna make me work harder, and uh, the rest of us too. I mean, it's better than a loss, but you know, you rather grow up with a win. It's like a win to them, you know, because they they didn't let Auburn win. You know, they ain't coming in their backyard and beat them, so it's just like a win to them. There's an old friend in your neighborhood. Call Alpha, a friend that everyone's talking about. Call Alpha. Call Alpha and compare your auto insurance rates. Call Alpha. Hmm. Call Alpha. You'll get good coverage, excellent claim service, and you'll probably save money. I think I'll call Alpha. Call Alpha. When Jimmy Rain of Great Southern Wood asked me to endorse his product, Osmos, I said, heck yes. And here's why. Coach, let me tell you why Osmos is the best. We start with the finest quality southern pine timber. Osmos is the purest wood preservative in the world, 99.9% .9 pure. We give a 40-year warranty with every piece of wood we treat, and that's the best guarantee you can get. Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest snack company, Golden Flake. Just go anywhere Golden Flake snacks are sold and fill out your entry form. Imagine cruising to an Auburn game in your specially customized football van, the War Eagle. And the lucky fan who wins shouldn't be too surprised. Auburn fans are used to winning. 
Van, courtesy of Edward Chevrolet and Custom Creation Vans. They do a great job of getting their fans into the game up there. Well, that's what, that's what you're supposed to do. When you play at home, you're supposed to have a home field advantage, and, and uh, Tennessee's got that. We expected that when we, when we got up there. And uh, We have a great drive here in the opening series where they chose to kick off to us, and we take it right down the field and get a field goal. We start off, we felt like we had to throw the football to, to balance up our attack, and, and we come right on making first downs right down the field. Throw it on first down, and then... Right, we, and, and uh, James Joseph does some good running here in this first drive, tailback, and uh, here's a, a sweep right here where he makes a nice run, I think about a 19-yard game. Might have scored there, it's close. To the, the, uh, and we have a procedure penalty right here that stops the, stops the drive, puts us in the first and 15, and uh, we try the reverse, and, and they play it perfectly, and then we get sacked, and... Uh, Actually, right here, if we could have got a little more on that guy, I believe Walker Reeves would have scored. We had a tight end delay, and, and everybody was gone out of the middle. And, and uh, But it was uh, played well by Tennessee, and we get the three points and, and uh, get on the board the first time we have the ball. 52-yard field goal by First play from scrimmage right here. Tennessee goes to the air. They feel like they got to throw the football, too, and the ball is tipped, and Greg Staples comes up with a, a great interception. Uh, Greg Staples is playing extremely good right now. Put Greg on scholarship last week, and, and uh, of course he's played great for us in three ball games. And Curtis Stewart running the sweep, and we have a uh, we throwing the football in long yard situations from the shotgun, and uh, we got into that situation with a holding penalty, and and uh, it was 15 or 20 yards to go. This is close to being a offensive pass on the <laughs> right there. I think he kind of grabbed um, look like uh, it. Alvin to keep him from intercepting that pass. i tell you, Francis, I thought, did a great job for him yesterday. He's scrambling around and coming up with some key big plays. He saved it three or four times in this drive by running out. And has uh, a great tailback, Reggie Cobb. And uh, we, for the most part, we did a great job on him yesterday. Right. And, you know, I think he had... Uh, He's 30 yards under his average. Well, I think, it, what do he have, uh, 66 yards right. and 20 carries? That's 3.3 right. 3 yards a carry, so that's not, uh, that's not too bad. So the quick screen, and we have good pursuit. And they pick up a little something, but not a great deal. This drive lasts about eight Here's minutes. Here's a good play by Kevin Porter. We bring the corner from the backside, and Kevin sacks the quarterback, and they miss a field goal here. Starting the second quarter, they hook it just left. I, you know, I... I was very impressed with that kicker, and, and but he missed two in the first half yesterday, and, and uh, then he came back and kicked a 51-yarder. So I think he's a fine kicker. He just may not have had one of his better days yesterday. Mm -hmm. I thought that both uh, Vincent Harris and Reggie Ware both ran the ball extremely well yesterday and uh, had some big runs out of, out of uh, James Joseph, too. I think that uh, I think we're not far from... from being able to run the football. Field. Good punt here by Brian Schumann. Good coverage, tackled by Perry Reed, and we didn't get a big play out of the kicking game yesterday other than the two field goals. Uh, nice play by Robert Goff. And he makes a big play here, too. There's a sack on the quarterback, he just puts the center and gets penetration and puts him on the ground. It was a great play right here, and this is sometimes feel it just like you're not supposed to win. Now, right. You know, Freddie will catch 99 out of 100 of those, and, and it's just one of those things where yesterday he said he had a hard time picking up the ball and uh, didn't, didn't, didn't pick it up in, until late, and he just, just missed it. Schumann laying it up here under the coverage, and Tennessee has to start at the 10, uh, the 11, but they're going to get their field position back on a lucky bounce on a kick. Well, here. we do a good job of stopping them here. And uh, as Howard, they've got two really fine runners. That was a big third down play right there. And and I think that's the reason they ran the sweep down on the goal line when they had fourth and a foot at the end of the game. Now, Freddie could have got this thing field and that thing bounced crazy on the after turf and they get a big roll out of it. And mm -hmm. I think it ended up being a 62 yard punt for them. That, right. that did give them field position. Took us out of field position. Right. Really big play. Kicking game. <laughs> a kicking game in these big ones, huh? I'm telling you. Of course, the, 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 the kicking game in the close ones. 
They're and going in for a field goal try here. Getting down toward the end of the half. Benji Rowland and Kurt Crane, Andre Bruce, Alvin Mitchell. Good coverage. Tracy Rocker and Benji Rowland on the tackle. Defense the triple option well. We did. Uh, they heard us a couple times. We came back and played about as Nate Hill and Tracy Rocker and, and uh, Greg Staples and. They missed another field goal try. Two and a half minutes left now as Auburn goes on offense. Well, there's Jeff throwing to Lawyer Tillman across the middle, and, and I thought Jeff did an excellent job yesterday. It was probably the most difficult playing condition for an opposing quarterback or for our quarterback that we've seen in a long, long time. He's hitting uh, Jeff uh, Walter Reeves there, and we get the blitz. He gets the ball off, makes a nice play to, to James Joseph. And one. the little man kicks one 55 yards. We kind of debated about that and time running down and we thought he was a little out of his range, but uh, he made us right. You glad you did. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute. Auburn and Coca-Cola, take one. The war is a day with the Coca-Cola wave. Stay right here. Colonial Bank has a great way to show your Auburn spirit, the Auburn Spirit Card. Anyone can apply for an Auburn Spirit MasterCard or Visa at a 15.5 annual percentage rate. The annual fee is $12, but there's no fee for Auburn Alumni Association members. Every time you use your card, the Alumni Association benefits. Show your Auburn spirit with Auburn Spirit Credit Card. Get all the details at Colonial Bank. Some people just can't remember oh, Alpha. to call Alpha and compare auto insurance rates. Cheese called Alpha. Call your Alpha insurance agent and compare. Call Alpha. You'll probably save money. You know what? Oh, uh, what's that, dear? I'm going to call Alpha and compare rates. All right! <laughs> you take a hint, boy. Yeah! I think you're really going to like this house. It's a new style we call the ranch. The sun deck is a... Mom! Hey, Mom! Uh, hey, Mom. This is Jen. Cool house. Come on, buddy. Want to see Grandma? Let's go see Grandma. Watch your step there, Mama. Luther, I've been walking up and down these steps for 40 years. No matter where you travel from to an Auburn game, chances are the roads you ride on may one day be improved because of research at Auburn University. Steve Beverly has a report. What happens here may well be determined here. This is part of Auburn University's National Center for Asphalt Technology. Established last fall, NCAT researchers are now conducting a series of tests to determine the durability of asphalt materials. The goal is to expand the life of asphalt roadways to as long as 10 years. One test simulates the temperatures asphalt materials are subjected to on a major highway. Basically what we do in this test is take a sample, heat it to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about the temperature that uh, the pavement will be heated up to in the field. Another test examines the quality of asphalt mixtures. NCAT executives in Auburn's College of Engineering say Alabama has many of the same highway problems as the rest of the nation. And so if we're successful in coming up with unique solutions to these problems, we will see immediate implementation in other states and internationally as well. Auburn is in the second year of a five-year grant to come up with solutions for these problems. For the Auburn Football Review, this is Steve Beverly reporting. You Auburn fans who want to see the Tigers now the rest of the year at Great Jordan-Hare Stadium, there are 1,200 season books remaining. They're $60. That's tickets to Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, Florida, and Florida State. Now, to get Florida and Florida State tickets, you have to buy the season books. Get them next week at the Auburn ticket office. 
Let's get back into the third quarter, Coach. This is a wild and woolly one. 93 or 4,000 people there yesterday. Well, they throw <coughs> deep on the first play from the scrimmage of the second half, and Kevin Porter actually had great coverage on the guy, and just, just uh, it's a game of inches sometimes, and he barely missed getting a hand on it. Great play right here by Craig Staples. Knocked the ball loose from that guy, and, and luckily for them, it was on the mm -hmm. sideline, and it got out of bounds before we got it, but Tennessee's going to take this one down and kick a field goal. Great play by Nate Hill. Did it for the most part just today. I think they heard us with one screen. Did a great job playing the screen. There's Nate Hill again. Kurt Crane. Here they go at a 51-yarder. And that guy kicks his this time. A long field goal from uh, you know, I think probably it's a little easier to kick off after turf than it is grass mm -hmm. or planting your foot. Mm -hmm. That's a critical penalty for us right there. We're just moving it. If the snap is a big first down, put the ball out about the 40-yard line and, and uh, come back and we throw an interception in the next play. And they will haunt you, won't they? And they take this one in to score and go ahead of us. You learn something about your team, though, after they go ahead here. Coach. Absolutely. They they take it in because this is good block and good execution on the part of Tennessee and we missed a couple of tackles there and, and they take it in and go ahead 10-6. to six. Here comes a 17-play drive, <coughs> mostly running, although we show the passes here. <coughs> just straight ahead blocking and running inside, mostly, Coach. Running. Well, we just, we kind of just out-muscled them right here. There's a great play right there, throw and catch uh, Jeff to Vincent Harris. Watch this. Great line and surge there. Well, Reggie, Reggie and Vincent Harris both make some great runs in this drive right here. You'll see them. Throw and catch to Lawyer Tillman for a 15-yard gain. <coughs> There's Vincent Harris again running hard. Now down to the 15 on second and seven. Excellent run right here by James Joseph. Good block. By the offensive line, Third they're coming off the football, getting movement. There's another good effort, run, good blocking. Now on the goal line. That was a third play, down play. And executed well right there. Jeff throwing to James Joseph for the touchdown. Puts us back in front. <coughs> 12 of them will kick the extra point, make it 13. 17 plays, 80 yards. They, they mishandle the ball here and, and get the quarterback in the tailback, get tangled up, and we get the fumble, and we take this one in the score. Running the football again. Really take control of the football game right here. Uh, excellent blocking up front. Entire offensive line, good running. Fourth quarter now, same drive, just switch into the it's field. It's a big, big play right there. That was a fourth and two play, and, and you know, we could have kicked the field goal, and but we had some momentum, and... Again, Curtis and the offensive line, they make you right when you, when you make it. <laughs> Another good run by Vincent Harris. Another one right here, a great run right here. Oh, my. <coughs> here we go. Power you can inside. See that, see that offensive line coming off the football, Walter Reeves. And, and, uh, well, that's power football there. Eh? Rodney Garner in that at guard. And, John Hudson, and we're going for the touchdown. Make it 20 to 10. Tennessee comes back, and they convert two or three big third down plays in this drive right here, which is... Francis stood in there well on that one. He took a pounding. <coughs> Cobb makes a nice run. Puts the ball down, I guess, around the five. Run the option. Don't get anything out of it. Two of our guys got the bell rung right there. <coughs> they go for the touchdown right here, and, and it's incomplete. Francis is not on his tape, but he did a great job of scrambling around and hitting his fullback, and they put it down to within about a half a yard of the, mm -hmm. of the uh, first down, and then they scored on the next play. Critical play here. <coughs> We had this first time we ran a sideline return all year long, and, and Tennessee did a great job with the coverage and probably should have just brought it straight up the field, but we don't get this one off the goal line. 
It's a little noisy yeah. in the stadium. Well, now. Tennessee's, you know, they've they sense that uh, the momentum has changed back that way now with a field goal. Schumann gets it out of there. Have good punt. coverage. Ooh. <coughs> Steve Brown and Perry Reed and Quentin Riggins. Third and sixth play right here. Big down for them. This is another one of the third down conversions. This is one of the screens that they executed very well. Great hit by Edward Phillips. I think Mr. Cobb probably didn't rest well last night because he really... Well, he's a fine football player, I can assure you that. Again, when the quarterback scrambles and just hits him for, you know, every, every yard is valuable now. Gets him close to the first down. That's the play right there I was talking about. Mm -hmm. so got the ball down the middle yard of the first down and mm -hmm. Cobb scores. Fourth and one right here. And they break it. <coughs> right. When you get down there, you got to go on out. We were gambling. They were going to run straight ahead. And the defense that we called was not designed to stop the sweep specifically. And uh, we had stopped them on the fourth or uh, third down short early in the ball game. And it's just. Big play there. Yeah. Cleet to Donaldson. Now we've got the first down. Got time and Jeff's doing a good job of executing the offense and we come out of there and make a first down at the ball at the 43 yard 43 line. 43-yard line. Of Tennessee. Pass to the 33. All right, and this is where the time runs out on us. as time runs out. What a game, what a game. 20 to 20. Tennessee and Auburn. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest snack company. Four, two, three, four. You brought me out of retirement today. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just so happy and so proud for you, and 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 hope that, that the feeling that you got inside of you now, when you walk out this dressing room and get on the bus to go home, it'll be one that you like and that, that you can can just don't want to get rid of. Because I'm an old man at this thing, and I love every one of you. I love you a little more when you win. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I care. That's, uh, but it's, uh, it was a big win for us under difficult circumstances. Let's take the day, men. Let's build around it. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dodd. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Food, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Phil Snow. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday in Keenan Stadium in North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Auburn 20, North Carolina 10. As you saw, a two War Eagle victory, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, Phil, I, to be honest with you, I, I guess I was a little selfish in my desire to win that football game. 
but I went up to Chapel Hill four times when I was at East Carolina, and we never went up there with a football team. We won twice and, and, and got tied once. We should have won the other one. But I never went up there with a football team that, that could match up with Carolina. And I dreamed about <laughs> taking one back up there that was man for man as good and with a chance to win. And um, that dream came true yesterday because it, it took a bunch of men to win the football game. As uh, we will see in uh, just a few minutes, uh, a lot of good things in the dressing room after that game, after such a big win, and let's get in there and then we'll talk more about the game later. All day long we've been talking about the corners, how they've been squatting, you know, when we thought we could get one deep, and Freddie and them kept coming back, Lawyer and Ace and Duke, and they all were saying the same thing, the corners are squatting, we can run by them. And I looked out there and Freddie was running by him 10 yards, and I just tried to lay it up to him. And then I planted like I would do an outer end, he kind of just froze and, and uh, looked kind of flat-footed, so I just took off again and uh, kind of left him there. You didn't have any fleeting thoughts of last week, did you? No, no. That you got? No. It reminded me a lot of Tennessee last week. You know, them get, jumping out ahead of us. You know, all the momentum skips to them, and, and we just said we got to just drive the ball down and put points on the board. That's the only way we're going to get the fans quiet and get them boys from jumping around so much. You know, so a lot of times, you know, you can't play good the whole game, but you know, you got to play good in certain areas. And I think we came through and had to. You got your bell rung one time. No, I got hit in the hip. <laughs> No, nah, I'll be there next week. I got my another We was in a three fox defense. I got over, the over top of the corner and picked one off. I got to learn how to run one back. But it tells some side line. I go quick across the middle and lose yards. They're going to show you that film if you kept going. Yeah, you got yeah that's what I'm saying. If I learn how to run one back for them, maybe I'll score. <laughs> I had a receiver cross in front of me, and what they tried to do is they tried to get you to bite on him, and then they throw to the back out of the backfield, and I uh, came off from him and just tried to read his eyes, and, uh, you know, he threw a bullet, and I just, you know, dove and caught it, and I was, you know, just real fortunate, I believe. And on the other one, you just were kind of sticking to your guy, huh? It was. We had man coverage, and uh, my back blocked, and I just floated a little bit, and he tried to throw it over my head, and uh, he underthrew it a little bit, and, you know, I reached up and got it. Did you entertain any thoughts of scoring glory? Well, I thought I had a chance at first, and the guy, I guess the receiver came and caught me. He probably caught me. Anyway, so. I think Kurt got it because he had to run and start, and I had to come off a block. He got to run in a lick, but I got a half a tackle, so I'm satisfied. Came over the big plays when we needed to, and and I think probably most of all everybody playing together, you know. And that's you know that's all we've been preaching, and we didn't have that last week, and we needed we came with it this week. Well, I get all the credit to our line. Now, they came on the ball second half like uh, they was ready, and what they give me, I'm gonna take. It. Feels better, doesn't it? It feels a whole lot better. <laughs> Tell me what you did after you caught that pass over the middle. I went back to the huddle and congratulated our offensive line for blocking and giving Jeff time to throw the ball. But we had been trouble, had, had been having trouble all day throwing the ball. I mean, we just wanted to give him some time so he can throw it. What happened to make you all able to move the football so well in the second half? Uh, we knew we had to do it. The offense, the running backs, the quarterbacks, we had to come together. We had to make our move. We had to make it in the second half. Learned a lot about yourself. Yeah, I did. So the coach, Coach Red, and the other coaches told us to watch out for the reverse. And uh, you had to go through a block. I knew sooner or later they were going to come. Where's the quarterback? Oh, it's, and, uh, oh, it's the quarterback block. You know, <laughs> not, <the same> <laughs> not really. You're never supposed to let a quarterback block you. That's one of the rules, quarterback and running back. <laughs> Last night when he came in the room, he had that same look on his face when he came in to tell us good night. And I said, Coach, uh, we're going to win this day. And he said, uh, pig this game me more to you than it do to me. And it did. I think you're really going to like this house. It's a new style we call the ranch. The style by today's uh, standards. A beautiful style. setting, though, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yes. And, and 53 degrees and, and windy. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was kind of chilly, really. And uh, I never had to put a jacket on. Uh, Got that look, Coach. Well... <laughs> You know, this football team has got a chance to be good, and we hadn't really, we hadn't, we, we didn't have to just play those things against Kansas and Texas, and, and uh, against Tennessee last week, we came up a little short, and, and I knew that this, this, uh, this game was going to give us an opportunity to, to grow up, uh, or we wouldn't have won yesterday. This is their second I possession. Think, I think that, uh, I think that we certainly uh, got something out of yesterday that we can build around, and our defense didn't give up another touchdown <coughs> again yesterday that we got a punt block for a touchdown but the defense didn't give up a touchdown and uh, 
you know, they, they just uh, continue to play well. We gave up some yardage in the first half, and, and we take this one down for, for a field goal now, and, uh, you know, we, we again, forced to play some new folks on offense and move some people around. And it was a third Jeff, down play there. Jeff Berger hitting Walter Reeves, and, and uh, of Walter's the best tight end in America, in my opinion. Vincent Harris at tailback. Vincent playing tailback and for the first time and did a great job for us. He again taking a handoff and offensive line coming off the football. And North Carolina's as good up front defensively as, as anybody that we've played, maybe better. Uh, I was talking to Stacy Searles last night, and he said that uh, he thought that uh, that defensive front was ju ju every bit as good as Tennessee and that the backup people were better than Tennessee. Um, you're going to see them move, move the football a little bit here. And Mark May has got uh, done some good things with the football. That's a good receiver, and, Marriott. Right. Too. They've got two outstanding wide receivers. Great goal line stand here. You get a face mask punch, and sometimes those things are, you know, they're just kind of unavoidable. And I think, Nate, you know, sometimes you, when you're going for a football play, you don't know what you're grabbing. And running back, and Kurt Crane comes up with a key play right here for us. And He's not the player of the week. I don't know how you could not <coughs> this one. With 15 tackles, five assists, well, you two take, interceptions. Uh, uh, Two sacks. He, he, you could see right there, he's kind of dancing with a quarterback and, and watching his eyes. And, we play in zone coverage, and they come back on, on defense, uh, offense, and again, you know, Mark May, they've done a good job of reading our secondary and, and going, uh, to, the, going uh, to the open guy. And, of course, our folks are fine oh. tackled by Edward Phillips right there. And, There's and, a silent uh, man on the defense. Alvin right? Mitchell. And we, we're getting some pressure. There's good pressure by Nate Hill. And uh, we got to make some yesterday. Well, that's always important as he threw that one with somebody right in his face. I'm not sure who that was. It was Ron Stallworth or Tracy Rocker or Benji Rowland or Robert Goff, somebody up front there. Just good, before the half Good now. protection there. And uh, Jeff hits uh, Lawyer and we don't move it anymore. And Brian Schumann did a great job of punting yesterday. And that right there, we worked on all week long yesterday, him kicking that thing up high and going down there and catching it or down in it. <coughs> they get a drive going just before the half. Trying Great to take the play lead. right there by uh, Kevin Porter. And uh, I believe that's Kevin's first interception, mm -hmm. but he's, he doesn't get as many opportunities as some of the rest of them. And tell you, North Carolina's defensive front, they can run. They got great speed and quickness, and, and they are good solid football team there's kurt and brian smith and benji Rowland. was james joseph on the sideline there yeah, james, in the we took all of the crippled guys with us for the hurt guy <coughs> shot right there of uh, mark may pulling the ball down and run for 15 or 16 yards and here again there's a big play right there and a big hit by nate hill and kurt crane and andre's that, back there and that punishment will begin to tell in the second half well, that's, uh, they, you know, they missed another field goal right there. And, of course, we probably dodged a bullet, but uh, it's a half. Uh, we hadn't got much going offensively, and they had moved the ball on us quite well defensively, and I felt fortunate to only be three points behind. All the radio and all the people felt like uh, <coughs> Carolina had, uh, had gotten the best of it in the first half. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about it, Phil. And, uh, again, you know, I, I took a little different approach to this. Uh, football game and and uh, because I, I I challenged our football team before the game and uh, at the half I came back and and challenged them again and uh, I think that they, they we grew some in the second half of that football game and and uh, if we can take that that uh, we we played on a different level in the second half on offense and defense and if we can if we can build around that then this team can be special before the year's over. We'll be back in just a minute. Go into the exciting third quarter now when Auburn falls behind. We get a couple of uh, early penalties on the first drive and they don't move. And now we pick up the action with the uh, second drive for North Carolina. Well, Phil, you know the, the, the game. There's a fine play right there by Quentin Riggins. And uh, the game 
you know, there was, some, there was a lot of penalties in the game, and we kind of, there's a great play right there by Craig Staples in there. Craig is, I don't know why he wants to turn back across the field right here. <laughs> That's his but third he, interception. <laughs> I know it, he, it did the same thing against Kansas, I believe, but he could have, or Tennessee, I guess. Thought if he'd have stayed outside, he might have had a chance to score. <clears throat> Curtis Stewart running the sweep, and here's a reverse, and I don't know about that. I was called a clip. Lawyer Tillman made a great run down to the 22-yard line. We got it nullified with a clip. And Third penalty of this quarter. That's the one that they blocked right there, and, and uh, we just didn't have good protection. And You know, I tell you, Phil, I, uh, right now, uh, we just not, yeah. we're not getting the production out of our specialty teams. And another great throw and catch. This is a great good drive. protection. Six plays into the end zone. <laughs> Now, Jeff, uh, in the offensive line, and you got to give Chris 11 of them out there, the, the offensive line is getting protection. We're getting movement. Uh, we, begin, we begin to 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 look like an offensive football team here. Every time we run the ball, we get movement up front, and there's some creases to run in, and Jeff's getting good protection. And, and, and right here, of course, he hits Freddie, and Freddie does a good job, and they, they kind of squat on looking for a shorter route and he runs by him and we tie the ball game 10 to 10. Now the one good thing about our offense is the two times that we've been behind this year they come right back and just been and, and look very dominant that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. That's a fine play right here you can see our defenses folks are you know they when you can make that quarterback get off of that spot back there then you know he's 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 not throwing in rhythm and that's what you want to do. <coughs> You see, Jeff does a great job right there. That was a deep route. It wasn't there. He dropped the ball. One, I was, I was one of the, talking to Pat Sullivan, that was one of the, the two best plays that, that uh, Jeff had yesterday. Outstanding throw and kick to the lawyer. We get the ball to the seven-yard line. And this is, uh, again, come back and hit uh, Vincent Harris. And Vincent's got outstanding hands. Makes Puts it down to around the three or four-yard line. Here's the play, the touchdown play on third and goal. Good block right there by Curtis Stewart. <coughs> Hit Vincent Harris in the end zone for the touchdown. He's frozen inside with a good fake to the fullback and through to the end zone. And it's getting kind of exciting over on that sideline. <coughs> Boy. Now they, they, you can, I mean, we come into life now and, mm -hmm. and, uh, it's uh, at this time, you know, I, I just, I, you just feel so, in, in, of all the things that happened yesterday, yeah, there's a lot of good things in the ball game, and there were some bad things too. We, we got some silly, we got caught up in the deal up there and got some silly penalties we shouldn't have got. That's Jeff throwing the, but the best thing of all is the offense didn't turn the football over. Yeah. And uh, one turnover in the ball game, in a game like that, could make a difference. And we didn't turn it over, and that was a big. And they turned it over four times. Oh, <coughs> that's another good play by Andre Bruce and Kirk Crane. It seemed like Andre and Kirk were getting at the mm -hmm. same time on several occasions yesterday. I don't know about that. That was a, that was deal. That's a, I mean, that was a 15-yard penalty. If he'd called that a five-yard penalty, it would have been a. It, would, it wouldn't have given a first down. Mm -hmm. And he kind of slid up underneath, and the guy actually just came down on him. Uh, as Andre makes a nice play on the draw. And a uh, little pressure on the quarterback. Great play by Carlos Cheatham. Auburn just has a seven-point lead now. This is still a big game. Right. And, uh, and they miss another field goal. <clears throat> and here, you know, we should take this ball right here and just uh, drive it and... But you can see that, you know, we're beginning to get movement. And I think the wear and tear is there. And boy, what a good job being in all the place to be in the there. Mm. But uh, they stop us, and we, we uh, had to punt. They go back on offense. But you can see us He's getting... He's hit as he throws. We're getting pressure to... to uh, to me now, great play right here by Brian Smith. That was Brian Smith that hit him just before, too. <coughs> on the previous play. 
Brian Smith uh, started yesterday. Alvin Mitchell has been starting. That's a fine play by Andre and Carlos Cheatham. And they run a draw play on third Kurt and 17. Crane and as all be, he's having a good time. We really appreciate our fans when we go on the road. And this this <laughs> last drive right here is, is uh, an outstanding drive. Scooby-Doo. We should have got the ball in the end zone for the touchdown. We shouldn't be satisfied to get it down there. That's a big third, third one, one. <coughs> situation. That was a nice little move right there by Vincent Harris to run and cut. Well, There's another good. fine run right here. Good blocking downfield by by uh, Reggie Ware. There's another fine block by Reggie and <coughs> good running. I guess, uh, Here's the put away field goal. Well, that was the one that kind of iced it for us with a minute and something left to go in the game. And they actually take the ball and move it a little bit, but don't get any points out of it. Time runs out and. We were happy to win 20 to 10, and it was a big win for us. And again, I think, I think the things that I felt yesterday on the sideline and in the dressing room after the game, and, and the way we prepared, uh, is means as much to me now as as the actual win itself. Alvin and Coca-Cola, take one. I tell you, I really get a big kick out of the, that that age, uh, uh, former players. Uh, Rufus Deal up in Tuscaloosa was one of my closest friends when I lived in Tuscaloosa. And, but uh, they have an old-timers get-together about three or four times a year. Now, you're talking about having fun. <laughs> uh, they have fun, play golf and go hunting or whatever. I don't know what, or whatever, but the, the wise and the, <clears throat> call them Mars Marauders or something. I'm not <laughs> sure what, the, but anyway, they have a great time. Then we got a mighty big game coming up with Vanderbilt. Mm. And... Uh, uh, again, I think it. We we are still not where we need to be offensively. Jeff Berger is throwing the football, and we're doing the things with the passing game we want to do. And if we can just get our running game to going, and and uh, and get that running and throwing, and not knowing when you're going to do what, then um, and our specialty teams. We just, we just, I'm really disappointed in the in the play of our specialty team. That, you know, to get a punt blocked in a game like that and lose a game with a punt, with a blocked punt, and, uh, you know, we just, we just got, I mean, we can't let that kind of thing happen. You got a stretch in here where you're going to be uh, <coughs> probably pretty heavy favorite, so you got to work hard in the next two or three weeks. Well, how we do in the last four ball games is going to depend how much we improve in the next three weeks. And uh, that's the attitude and that's the approach you got to take. And um, I was hoping that we'd get to this point right here without any blemishes, but we got a tie. So uh, we got we got our work cut out for us. And our players are smart enough to know what we got in front of us. So they'll work and we'll get better. Tickets remain for Vanderbilt, Georgia Tech in Atlanta, and Mississippi State. Get them this week at the Auburn Ticket Office. And join us next week as we review Auburn Vanderbilt. Thank you. proud of you and proud for you and uh, I do believe that I do believe that we grew in a lot of areas uh, if we if we if we didn't do anything of course not turning the football over man I can't in no way for me to describe how important that is for you and to this football team every 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 game is important and now like this weekend tonight and tomorrow and uh, the way you conduct yourself on a, on a daily basis, off the field as well as on the field, man, is, is important to you. All that matters for us, men, is to continue to get b better and better and better. Don't be satisfied. We're not good enough. We're not good enough yet.
This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Food, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Bill Snow. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday at Jordan-Hare Stadium on a beautiful fall afternoon, the Tigers took Vanderbilt apart, 48-15. to 15. Coach, uh, one of the just remarkable offensive days. Well, uh, still, when you get into a game, you know, there's a lot of upsets around the country yesterday. And um, the one thing that, um, that you learn or you hope that you learn is that anybody that you play can beat you and and uh, Vanderbilt had that good a football team but I thought that our players and our coaching staff did a great job of uh, preparation last week and and realizing the potential of, of Vanderbilt and uh, and I thought you know, Vanderbilt had a good plan and and uh, you know we made it look easy to some extent throwing the football as well as we threw it but uh, you know, they moved the ball on us from time to time, and um, it, was a, it was a game that could have been much closer. Uh, the, the big thing in the ball game was the fact that we did not turn the football over, and they turned it over three times, and one of them gave us a touchdown. Maybe more than one of them gave us a touchdown, but uh, that always plays a, a big part in the score in the game. Uh, I thought that we showed definite improvement in some areas. I thought our kicking game, especially teams play, was was a, a, a lot better. And uh, I think we got better as a football team last week. But I think that uh, I think there's still room for improvement. We still got uh, stopped ourselves twice down inside the 20 yard line. A lot of penalties. Well, not uh, not so much as a lot of them. We had more than you than you want to. It uh, it was. Uh, I think we had 50 yards in the first half and one five-yard penalty in the second half. But <coughs> that's still too many. Mm -hmm. If we can, if we could not stop ourselves and continue to not turn the football over and and grow the specialty team, gain confidence and get better, then uh, then we got a chance to be a complete football team. Let's go into the dressing room now and talk to some of the players. We have Nate Hill, who has recovered a, uh, a fumble for a touchdown and scored. We have Malcolm McCary, who's intercepted a pass and scored. And now we have Craig Ogletree, who intercepted a pass but let the quarterback knock him out of bounds on a one-yard line. What about this, Malcolm? What can you tell us? He should have turned the full-full speed on. <laughs> Has he got full-full speed? Yeah, he should have really? been in the end zone on that one. Coach him, Nate. Tell him what he needs to do. Well, you should have ducked your head and went in and uh, knocked him over. <laughs> Next time. Work with the guy. Here's uh, I seen the receiver go um, outside, in which I thought he was coming inside, and the quarterback just sort of threw it right in my hand, so I, I just picked it off and tried to run with it. Did the no huddle bother you all at all? No, we had prepared for that during the week. We knew exactly what to expect, and it was no problem at all. I was looking forward for my first touchdown, and um, today, offensive line blocked real, real well, and I get all the credit to them. Got your hands on the football today. Yeah, finally. <laughs> ran it, felt pretty good. We ran a little quick route. Jeff picked me up. About a three-yard drop back, and he saw me open in the middle, and he got it to me. The first few times, he tried to kick away, and uh, I just tried to, you know, a lot of times when the ball was kicked, I just tried to try to get a good jump on the ball, and uh, it kind of made me be a little more alert back there because, uh, you know, I could tell the way he would step most of the time he kicked the ball that way. Got back to some of that lay it up for lawyer today, huh? Well, you know, that's something we've been working on all week, you know, doing out there going with the confidence of Jeff and just have a great passing game. After I called it, rather than to continue into the coverage, I thought, uh, why not take a chance and flip around backwards and see what was behind me rather than I pretty much knew what was in front of me so uh, it worked out for me. You ran some patterns today, guy. You undressed that guy down there a couple of times. Yeah, it was a man-to-man -man break. It was corner out and then the guy he knocked a little inside of him and then I trued him up and then I post break and came out of the corner and I was wide open. You trued him up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I've been playing with a lot of confidence and the guys around me have been playing with a lot of confidence and I mean I had all day to throw the football and uh, if, if they can 
can keep can doing that and the way the guys are catching the football, I think we can go out and do that each week, and um, I'm very happy with it. You guys had a good day today, didn't you? Yeah, uh, I feel like we had a really good day today. Yeah. How are you doing personally, Vincent? Uh, I'm doing a lot better than I was, you know. I was still having some trouble with my ankle, but I feel like it's, gonna, it's gotten a lot better now. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world. Colonial Bank has a great way to show your Auburn spirit, the Auburn Spirit Card. Anyone can apply for an Auburn Spirit MasterCard or Visa at a 15.5 annual percentage rate. The annual fee is $12, but there's no fee for Auburn Alumni Association members. Every time you use your card, the Alumni Association benefits. Show your Auburn spirit with Auburn Spirit Credit Card. Get all the details at Colonial Bank. 79. Is that, <laughs> is, that a, is that a tiger's nose? That's a tiger. That's one of 79,000 at Jordan here yesterday. Well, we had a great time, and we had a lot of high school football teams there, and a lot of high school bands, and yeah. all of our fans, and our band did a great job. And First time all the students were Beautiful there. day, beautiful day for football. We start out on defense and stop them the first time they get the football. <coughs> Vanderbilt moved the ball on some yesterday. Great play right there by Kirk Sanders. Well, he knew that play was coming, didn't he? Well, we'd worked on it all week long, and uh, just recognition, and you know, the first play from scrimmage, we throw the quick screen, and Freddie, I don't know how long was this play, 30, 40 yards? 46 yards. 46 yards. And uh, we started Freddie and Lloyd at wide out yesterday, and we got five or six wide receivers that we got confidence in and can play as Vincent Harris running a sweep. And, and I feel like our running game is coming along and getting better. Good protection now that Reggie Ware picks up one. And I don't know whether we were, were we in motion or we never got set or whether we were turning up the field, whatever. The reason we stop ourselves again, and one of the things that I'm trying to get us to, to, to not do is beat ourselves when we get in that close, but we get the field goal and three to nothing. Their next possession. <coughs> they uh, complete a little look-in pass and... A big fullback, a strong runner inside. The ball just comes out here. Andre Bruce gets on it. Just great play. and Johnny on the spot as Coach Jordan. Well, he's got that quickness and, and just got on. This sets up a touchdown. Good running right there. Break two or three tackles and, and uh, make five or six yards. Uh, Vincent Harris. Jeff dumps it off to Vincent and uh, makes another nice game. Uh, our whole offensive staff is here. It comes doing an excellent job. Great play. Watch this catch here. And you could just sense it from Lawyer when the ball was put in there. You could see uh, Lawyer just kind of uh, timing that thing for his jump and just went up and dominated the football. They come back and move the football, aided by a interference call here. <coughs> well, they got two 15-yard penalties on this drive here, and again, that's. That's not what we want. I mean, that's not what we got to have to be a championship football team. We got a they well, move that it on down. call and the guy takes it in from there. This is suddenly a football game now. The score is ten to six. Watch Nate Hill come in and block the uh, Great extra point. Shot right there. Now for about uh, a quarter, this is a football game. This is a this is a battle. As uh, Jeff throwing to Walter Reeves, Walter makes a nice run with it as he catches it. I think 15, 16 yard play. This is middle of the second quarter now. We're going to take it right on down. Jeff again finds Freddie over the middle. I believe that was after the penalty and it's a big play for us. It was. <coughs> Good running by Curtis Stewart going for uh, 10 yards on second and seven. Down to the 35. There's a great job by picking up the blitz right here. And whenever you can pick up that blitz like that, it's going to leave you one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what we had. And Lawyer beat his guy, and Jeff laid it in there. They are man in the secondary when they're blitzing, Coach. Man yeah. in the secondary. And Curtis Stewart on the goal line, after making the key block on the pass play, gets to run it in the end zone for his first touchdown of the year. I know he was proud of that. Well, Curtis is playing well, and, and <coughs> we 
trying to get some young backs playing, and, and uh, Harry Mose made a couple of pretty good runs yesterday, and, and uh, Stacy Danner made a couple of good runs. Behind play right here by Carlo Cheatham. Good pressure by Kurt Crane, and made the quarterback scramble out of the pocket and, and make a mistake with the ball. You didn't help the official yep. out there, Coach. <coughs> We're lucky here. That's the nearest to a turnover Auburn had. There's Sean Smith, and Sean actually sprained his ankle on that play. Working Sean at tailback and, and works there, but he's been there for the last couple of weeks. Fine play by Jeff and Scott Bolton. Great protection. Takes Scott, it in for the touchdown. Scott said he knew what was in front of him, so he decided to run the other way for a while and see what happened. And it worked. I believe his first touchdown reception of the year. Hey, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> they are adept at spreading you out and finding the Good open Good play end. by Greg Staples and Carlo Cheatham. We got some pressure, almost an interception right there by Kevin Porter. And as the half ends, they try the 54-yard field goal, and Clark makes it, and he's the most surprised guy in the stadium. 24 to 9 at the half. We'll be back in just a minute. Hey, good morning. And it's a good morning for you to call Alpha. Hmm. Call oh, Alpha. Here's your paper. Some people need to be constantly reminded to call Alpha and compare auto insurance rates. Good morning, Dad. Hi, Dad. Call and compare. You'll probably save money. All right. I'm going to call Alpha, and I'm going to compare rates. Uh, hey, that means we can cancel the marching band and the Sky Rider. <laughs> the Sky Rider. When Jimmy Rain of Great Southern Wood asked me to endorse his product, Osmos, I said, heck yes. And here's why. Coach, let me tell you why Osmos is the best. We start with the finest quality Southern pine timber. Osmos is the purest wood preservative in the world, 99.9% .9 pure. We give a 40-year warranty with every piece of wood we treat, and that's the best guarantee you can get. Osmo, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest snack company, Golden Flakes. Just go anywhere Golden Flakes snacks are sold and fill out your entry form. Imagine cruising to an Auburn game in your specially customized football van, the War Eagle. And the lucky fan who wins shouldn't be too surprised. Auburn fans are used to winning. Van, courtesy of Edward Chevrolet and Custom Creation Vans. you can remember it's been part of your dreams, part of your sunshine, and we suspect it always will be. Auburn University is proud of the accomplishments of its faculty. In today's feature, Steve Beverly visits with the professor who keeps in touch with his students and his roots. Just a centralized government. But Spend rather, a few moments with Dr. Wayne Flint and you'll find yourself in a walking time machine of Southern history. ...that are closest to nature for the longest period of time in American history. Flint is one of Auburn's award-winning faculty members. As Hollifield Professor of History, he makes every minute count in the classroom. The lectures are more like one-on-one -on -one conversations with Flint students. But he says good teaching is like anything else done well. It takes good preparation. Every time I walk into a class, the first of a quarter, I get just as many butterflies as the first time I did it 25 years ago. And so to some degree, I think if you walk into the class lackadaisical and as if this is a routine kind of experience, you're in big trouble. Dr. Flint is a noted author as well. His most recent book traces the history of Alabama's industrial development. His writing reflects his philosophy that teaching involves communication and learning requires curiosity. And I think the most essential thing is you start off with students who are intellectually good and intellectually curious. Therefore, you're going to have to find some way to convince them that what you say is really important, that history matters. 
Flint tells me he wouldn't trade his life at Auburn. In his words, it may be a large university, but it's a place where a professor still has time for students. For the Auburn Football Review, this is Steve Beverly reporting. You moved west. A lot of academic talent on that campus over there. And it, people that haven't read that book need to get and read it about, um, and it's, it's very interesting. And uh, he's not only an outstanding author, he's an outstanding speaker. And um, just to, and knows Alabama history is probably as well as anybody in the state. I thought yesterday as I went in the stadium seeing all those young kids in the bands come up and go, what a thrill that must be for a young boy or girl. Well, I got to go to a big stadium and participate in a game like that. You know, I got uh, I got a big kick out of walking to the stadium yesterday. That's not my favorite ritual. The players like it. I don't necessarily like it. I feel like I'm parading, and I've not <laughs> been too fond of parades. But uh, I got a kick out of all the little kids, and I don't know where, whether they were in grammar school or junior high school or what, but they were standing along the old <laughs> path to the stadium, and the eyes big, and and then you, you're seeing those players walk by and. <laughs> Was the great Auburn band. band there doing an NBC theme. <coughs> is that for you? Or well, I, well we're NBC. Or whatever. We it. <laughs> uh, it was, a, it was a great day for football field. It was not too hot. It was hot enough, but um, just very comfortable. As Freddie is running back to kickoffs and punts and catching the ball and we had an all-around day yesterday he did and and uh it had pretty had an excellent week of practice last week and and uh played played well against uh start off throw the quick screen again to lawyer tillman and and lawyers playing good i i just uh a football team right now is is just uh, they're fun to coach and fun to be around and and we still are lacking in a few little areas but uh, hopefully we can just keep working at it and get it all done as Reggie Ware running the toss sweep and Vincent Harris blocking for him here's Vincent blocking for for Curtis and and uh, <coughs> You can develop that chemistry and that unselfishness where they all pull into each other and working together and, and they become a unit. And, uh, there's Ralph. <laughs> one of our photographers and has a great play by Andre Bruce, forces a pitch and then gets in on the on the tackle and uh, Kurt Crane out there. And there's Tracy Rocker and Kurt and Edward Phillips. Played a lot of people yesterday. A lot of folks got an opportunity to play. Fine play by Alvin Briggs. They've got a they're kind of a unique as Coach Sullivan and Jeff. And <coughs> I've learned a lot from Pat in that he works he works Jeff and our quarterbacks every day and and just uh, has done a terrific job with them. And as Jeff throwing to. Lee Mark Sellers, I was glad Lee Mark had an opportunity to catch that pass, and he's worked hard. He's a very unselfish member of our football team, an outstanding young man. He has a good hole, big hole for Curtis, and and makes Le a 17, 18-yard run out of it. I believe he tripped on Alex, or he might have... Uh, he's throwing again to, to Reggie Ware. Jeff's just doing a terrific job of reading the defense and the offensive line, and they're doing a great job of protection for him. Look at the time he's got here to throw the ball deep to Duke Donaldson. Well, Duke ran some patterns, Coach. He eluded those defenders. Yeah, he's just, uh, Duke has been a solid player. He's one of the guys that didn't miss a snap in the spring. Reggie takes it over from the one and on 34 to 9. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff's numbers yesterday were 14 of 18 for 282 yards, two touchdowns. Well, he's just, uh, he's playing just like he's practicing. Of course, he missed a day of practice last week. As wow. good hit by Craig Staples, and then Carlo Cheatham comes in and finishes him off, and the old fullback is Ron Stallworth and, and uh, who's Nate Hill. And you run that wishbone, you need that fullback Benji later. Rowland and there's Robert Goff and Tracy Rocker again, and Kurt. And they got the uh, whole kind of movement there and get sacked and, and there's Tracy and, and uh, Greg Ogletree. Greg comes up with a nice interception a little later. Here's a fine return by Freddie. 
good block right here. Kevin Porter and I believe it maybe was Alvin Briggs or whoever. And uh, <clears throat> bring it back about uh, 25 or 30 yards and get us back in the middle of the field. Good field position. Reggie Slack at quarterback now. Glad that Reggie got an opportunity to play yesterday. Hits uh, Alexander Wright on the turn. <coughs> Going to him again. This is uh, this is Greg Taylor. Now this Greg Taylor is going to be a, an exciting football player. Now he hasn't had the opportunity to play a lot, and he hasn't had. But uh, you can put that name down because he's going to be a terrific little player. As Harry Mose. <coughs> I guess probably as uh, Alex, Alex Strong getting the ball down close. I wish we hadn't put those big guys back in there right there, but uh, as, as the, the three musketeers or the, <laughs> whatever they call themselves, I don't know if uh, <laughs> Curtis and Vincent and Reggie and as I said, they're all playing very unselfish. There's a fine hit. There's Perry Reed and Alvin Mitchell and as Alvin again. Quentin Riggins standing Quentin up. Riggins, big play. Quentin got right down the middle. I know that Quentin made 11 or 12 tackles yesterday. There's uh, David Rocker and Fernando Horn and Lamar Rogers and Malcolm McCrary. There's good pressure again and uh, sacked by Robert Goff. There's a clip right there. <laughs> if he'd had a blue jersey on, they might have called that. <laughs> <coughs> Here's the interception by that was, Craig Olson. That's a great job right there. Our linebacker baited the quarterback and, and looked like both of them were coming. And at the last second, Craig fell off and, and made the play. And there's John Wiley uh, getting in and almost a touchdown. They pitch it out, and there's Jerry Helms and, and uh, Anthony Brown and Kevin Collins. And, I believe Mike Glisson and, and uh, Mark Rose, all of our rest guys playing. Good to see everybody get an opportunity to play some yesterday. And um, again, the score, I think, is a little misleading. And, but um, it was a big win for us, and I think we grew as a football team. And uh, again, you know, I, I just I want us to just keep in mind that, that uh, Again, we're going to be favored again this week and everything. Everybody thinks there's going to be nothing to it. But again, you know, everybody that we play has got a chance to beat us. And, and we've got to get ready to play Georgia Tech just like it's the biggest game of the year. Take that attitude and practice, continue to improve, continue to get better at the little things, be a little more disciplined as far as penalties are concerned, continue to try to perfect our specialty game. And, uh, you know, I think that um, I think this football team still got a chance. All right, we'll be back to talk about tech in just a minute. Does anybody know you at the bank? At Colonial. <laughs> I'm Brian Gumbel. This week on Today, India's Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. I'm Jane Paul. We also have Paul Newman, Joanne Woodward, George Harrison, and Cher. That's this week on Today. Experienced, comprehensive, insightful, innovative, informative, dependable, responsible, fast, fast, accurate, fair, clear. Tom Brokaw and the NBC Nightly News. All over America, people are discovering that U.S. savings bonds are the great American investment. Find out why. Call 1-800-US-BONDS. It's a two-day super sale. Find the lowest prices ever on 19-inch color TVs, as low as $69. It's happening Saturday, October 17th, and Sunday, October 18th, at the Holiday Inn Eastern Bypass in I-85. These beautiful used 19-inch color TVs are tested, reconditioned, and guaranteed as low as $69. Buy one. If you're not happy, return the set within 10 days and get your money back. It's a two-day super sale, and quantities are limited. So hurry to the Holiday Inn on the Eastern Bypass and I-85, Saturday 10 till 6 and Sunday 12 till 5. Tonight at 6 on Our House, will Jesse and the kids have to find another place to live when Grandpa Gus won't change his old ways? Then at 7 on Family Ties, the family's fit to be tied over Mom's job. What's a mother to do? Just quit? 
At 7.30, will my two dads survive their daughter's first date? Then at 8, one of America's most loved families is back for a world premiere movie. The Bradfords celebrate a warm family reunion. Big Ben Patton, Mary Fran, and the original cast prove once again that 8 is enough. Tonight on WSFA. WSFA, Montgomery. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Food, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Phil Snow. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Just another thriller from Atlanta yesterday, Pat and I. Oh, what a game. Well, it was, uh, Phil, and uh, the game, because you could tell at the end there, was a very humble feeling to me. Yeah. Uh, we had played, not played our game offensively, or Tech took us out of our game. And you got to give Georgia Tech a lot of credit. They, had a, they did a great job against us, and we turned the ball over, and did all the things yesterday that we hadn't been doing. We missed three field goals. We turned it over four times. And defensively, uh, you know, that's what the great defensive football teams are, are capable of doing. And, and that's what happened yesterday. What a magnificent thing. defense got two touchdowns and, and uh, kept us in the ball game. And then <clears throat> all the things that you teach and you preach and you hope that the players will grasp from the game came about in that 91-yard drive at the end of the game. It and was a classic. Where, where you, it takes tremendous poise and confidence and, and character and guts and all of the qualities that you look for in a man, but you also look for them in a, in a, in a football team. That's what they displayed, and, and that's, that's the reason to me it was, it was an emotional thing to me because, you know, you hope that you're going to see that in your football team. And we saw it yesterday. <coughs> and let's go in the dressing room now for a little of Rear Eagle and some other precious moments. One, two, three. War Eagle Battle Never at the top or never at the end. War Eagle Battle Group. Right on the door again. Go, go, go. On the street. Give it up, give it up. Give it up, give it up. Hey, War Eagle Battle Group. There's too many of you guys uh, to, to, to single out any of you. Uh, of course, Andre, I think it, uh, I don't think that I've ever seen anything any more spectacular than what took place out there today, as far as you're concerned. But it's a team game, and, you know, Jeff hadn't thrown any interception, and Lyle hadn't missed any field goals, men. Maybe the good Lord just put us to a test today to see what you've made out of. Probably a, a good thing for us. It's a big win for you. It couldn't be any bigger if you wanted 100 to nothing, I'm telling you. The way you win it is what's, in, won it is what's important. Um, obviously, we got a lot of work to do. And, um, but the big thing is that I want you to get that old gleam in your eye and 
and that knot in your belly that makes you want to play and exceed and win. Big game for you seniors. I, uh, I appreciate it for a selfish reason, too. <coughs> Played, been against uh, Georgia Tech uh, 11 times now. About 11 W's. Took us a long time to get that in the date, didn't it, Andre? <laughs> <laughs> they, said, they, said that, they said to have a 60-minute plan, and that's, that's what it took. Congratulations, man. I'm mighty proud of you. Way to go, buddy. Yeah. The thing about it, you know, our football team didn't give up, and that's the main thing. You know, we, the coaches strive and, you know, having a 60-minute plan, and uh, the day we needed it. Well, in the end, we came through. It was a hard time. It was a hard fought game. It showed that uh, you can't take your opponent lightly. Just got to play a whole 60 minutes. It was kind of a love-hate relationship with the offense today. Then you wanted to hate them a little bit, and then you ended up loving them. Yeah, I hate them at the beginning. When Lottie caught the pass, I loved them. I hurt them off. <laughs> Bro, it's always went down. And me and Nate, Big, and uh, Benji had to take the load. And it was worth it. I mean, we enjoyed it. We've been practicing like this all year. It was worth the fight. Yeah, you could. Our uh, receivers and some guns were out there about to die. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they did good. Everybody's out there about to die. We all sucked it up, came together, and, you know, hopefully this, hopefully this make a better, better team. Having yourself a year, buddy. I'm trying to make the best of it. This is my last one. I don't have one chance, so I got to do the best I can. It was fourth down. Jeff called the play, and I knew I had man. And then all he told me to do is get away from the guy. And he threw the ball right at the referee, and I had to wait till the guy cleared so I can see the ball. And then as soon as it's cleared, I had to wait and catch it down low. You didn't see it from the beginning, huh? No, I didn't see it from the beginning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime we can get Duke or Trey like those guys last year, we try to get one-on-one -on -one with anybody we think. And then we you can. were thinking lawyer down on the goal line. Right. Lawyer, um, the previous play before told me he was in the back of the end zone and he was open. And uh, I just kept that in my mind. And as tall as lawyer is, when I looked up, I had eye-to-eye -eye contact with him. And I threw it high and he went up and got it. Since I left the line, you know, I was looking Jeff straight in the face. He was looking me straight in the face. But the confidence Jeff has in me, he drilled the ball while the defensive back had more uh, concentration on me, and so we just came up with the big play at the big time. Tell me about your boy Andre. So <laughs> too much you can say for Andre. <laughs> eccentric good football player. He's an eccentrically good football player. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I think I like that. <laughs> Weekend, ways off. Does anybody know you at the bank? At Colonial Bank, we believe banking is a people business. Here in Clanton, and in every office from Huntsville to Mobile, Colonial Bankers are local people. We want to get to know you, to serve you better. Bank at Colonial and bank with someone you know. Pat, Doc. It's a great feeling. Colonial Bank. There's an old friend in your neighborhood. Call Alpha. A friend that everyone's talking about. Call Alpha. Call Alpha and compare your auto insurance rates. Alpha. Hmm. Call Alpha. You'll get good coverage, excellent claim service, and you'll probably save money. I think I'll call Alpha. Call Alpha. Sunny and warm, Grant Field, Atlanta. My, were they wound up tight and ready well, to play over. Well, you know, I caught the cheerleaders coming across the field about before the game, and I told them, I said, look, we're fixing it. We're in for a war, and I want you, you to get our crowd ready for that kind of fight because I, I knew what we were in for. I knew Bobby Ross. I knew he'd had his football team ready. I knew the problems that we had had, and, and this is the, uh, I believe, second. Second interception. Right. The first interception, Lawyer had slipped down, and, and Jeff throwing, I think it probably been a complete pass, but Lawyer slipped on the turf, and, and uh, this one. But our defense rose to the occasion here, <coughs> like they did so many times yesterday. One thing about uh, uh, 
football or basketball or anything else. And the great Tracy Rocker played a great football game he yesterday did. along with Benji Rowland and Nate Hill. And, and there's Tracy snatching the ball away from him. And uh, uh, who's that? Uh, Benji Rowland comes up with a fumble. Fum uh, there's Brian Smith. And, but uh, on the road, you know, your offense may have may not have a hot hand all the time. And there's Jeff throwing to Scott Bolton. And we moved the ball a little bit in the middle of the field. And we couldn't get anything going running the football. It just like that all day long. The Georgia Tech just whipped us up front. And we just, if we had any holes, we didn't get in them. And it just uh, very frustrating. That was a key third down play right there. And, after punt. <coughs> now we're in the second quarter. Jeff did not lose his poise. He didn't have no. His he first is, Jeff is a very, very mature young man, and there's Nate right there making the play, and everybody's around him. Robert Goff. There's Nate again. They had a little mix up in the backfield, and third and long. You know, <coughs> our defense played extremely well, but you still didn't have the feeling that that, uh, that we were real emotional on that side of the football either. <coughs> Georgia Tech came up with some plays offensively, of course, you know, that during the course of the game that, that hurt us as Robert Goff and uh, Craig Ogletree. Third and, uh, and three coming. Watch this pass interception. Is in there something? There's Kevin Porter right is coming by. He tries to lateral to Kevin coming well, by. I wouldn't recommend trying to do that. That's almost a disaster right there when we have a great play and it's a nice run by Curtis Stewart. I believe it's probably the longest run we had of the day, probably. 15 yards. Was it 15 yards? And Third and two. This is a, this is kind of a, that's not too good there. I mean, you know, third and two and you don't make it back to the line of scrimmage is just not, is not. Uh, Three big defensive <coughs> plays in a row right here, Coach. As Andre, back on the quarterback, Benji. Second and 15 now after the five-yard loss. At, uh, there's Benji Rowland making a play on the draw for a yard or two loss. Here comes the touchdown play. All right, you're going to see Benji have him, and Andre knocks the ball loose with his left hand. Kurt Crane gets on it in the end zone for the touchdown. And Tracy gets on him. <laughs> there's Benji got there, and it's a big, big football play because we hadn't gotten anything going offensively and defensively. We just, you know, just making things happen and, and uh, their next possession now, late in the half, <coughs> in the second quarter, just before the half. And who was that? That was uh, as Andre, Andre and, and Andre and uh, uh, Tracy again. Isn't there something right here? He just picks that one off, and then makes a nice return with it. We really get it back down there in good shape, and, and again, Phil, we don't get any points out of it. Uh, right. Win Lyle hit the upright. For the field goal, but you know we should have taken the thing in the score. We get sacked here, and I don't know. It's just a, just a very frustrating day. And again, you know I want to give Georgia Tech credit. They played good. They played hard, and they really deserve better than they got out of the ball game yesterday for sure. Fifty-one yard field goal try hits the right upright, and the score is Auburn seven, Tech nothing at the half. I think you're really going to like this house. It's a new style we call the ranch. The sun deck is... A mom! Hey, Mom! Uh, hey, Mom. This is Jen. Cool house. Come on, buddy. Want to see Grandma? Let's go see Grandma. Watch your step there, Mama. Luther, I've been walking up and down these steps for 40 years. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest snack company, Golden Flakes. Just go anywhere Golden Flakes snacks are sold and fill out your entry form. Imagine cruising to an Auburn game in your specially customized football van, the War Eagle. And the lucky fan who wins shouldn't be too surprised. Auburn fans are used to winning. Van, courtesy of Edward Chevrolet and Custom Creation Vans. Auburn and Coca-Cola, take one. The war is a day with the Coca-Cola wave. Stay right here, just on the beach. Auburn's going to victory. Yeah. Two ways to go, catch the wave. Two ways to go, catch the wave. Orange and blue wave. Two ways to go, catch the wave. Two ways to go, catch the wave. 
Colonial Bank has a great way to show your Auburn spirit, the Auburn Spirit Card. Anyone can apply for an Auburn Spirit MasterCard or Visa at a 15.5 annual percentage rate. The annual fee is $12, but there's no fee for Auburn Alumni Association members. Every time you use your cards, the Alumni Association benefits. Show your Auburn spirit with Auburn Spirit Credit Card. Get all the details at Colonial Bank. Sadly, a 95-year tradition ended last Thursday at Auburn. On our feature today, Steve Beverly has a look at some Auburn Rec Tech pajama parades of the past and present. It was 1892, so the legend goes, when Auburn men sneaked out in their night clothes. A football game would be played next day. Georgia Tech was coming by train to play. So in their PJs, those plainsmen greased the track. The train slid, and those engineers had to walk two miles back. Ninety-five years later, the legend will say, a parade came to Rec Tech one final day. The pajamas are still here for more than a mile, in boxer and nightshirt and baby doll style. The floats predict the horror of a yellow jacket's fate, and you can count on a marcher to tell you. You find purple and green in those shirtless and bare, and to mourn this tradition's end, some were in formal wear. It's a day it's acceptable to be a nut or a clown, one man says it's why he moved to town. Well, I love the young people. That's why I'm, that's why I moved to this area. My grandchildren both graduated from here and they had the mobile home, so I moved in. The nostalgia of Rec Tech is like one last kiss. You just can't replace a gathering like this. It's, it's been a part of Auburn's tradition for a long time. Pajamas, everything. It's just, it's, it's gonna be missed. The memories we'll keep and our grandchildren will tell. We'll wreck tech no more, but we'll remember this well. For the Auburn Football Review, this is Steve Beverly. You know, uh, Phil, you, well, you know, the, the, the Georgia Tech at one time dominated Auburn and, and beat them 13 years in a row. And um, I've been, you know, I've been close to that Georgia Tech situation growing up in Georgia and playing at uh, Georgia and uh, when I went to the university Georgia hadn't beaten them in eight years and I was mentioning a while ago how easy I mean you remember some of those things because when I went to when I went to Georgia and I told the tech recruiter that I was going to sign with Georgia he said well he'll never beat Georgia Tech <laughs> it's funny how some of those things stand out in your mind in the early scene and there you could see Nett, one of my older brothers that, uh, you know, has been there a lot of times himself. In fact, he was on the team that broke the drought in 57. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nett gets into it, isn't he? <laughs> doesn't he? He is some kind yeah, Well, of you know, so. uh, Phil, I, 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 sometimes, you know, you can, you can sense something like yesterday coming on, and uh, I wasn't exactly pleased with, you know, with the, this uh, atmosphere around the football team and I kind of jumped on it. In fact, I didn't kind of jump on I jumped on good at breakfast yesterday morning, just too much loose talk and conversation. And, and again, uh, I can't emphasize enough. There's a, uh, Edward Phillips calls that fumble and Andre Bruce got on it. Andre had uh, three interceptions, a called fumble for a touchdown. We turn it right back over to him. Uh, an interception for a four touchdown. Right, an interception for a touchdown. And, I mean, it was an unbelievable day. Several sacks. <clears throat> they, do, they, they took it down. We got the ball. We turned right back over to them and gave them. So, I mean, you know, defensively, I mean, offensively, we put ourselves, our defense, in very poor field position. And uh, it just, we, you know, you can't do that. And, and, and it almost cost us yesterday. It was a nice play, screen pass. Georgia Tech knocks us loose on the football. You know, it's a contact sport, and if you're going to carry the football, you've got to expect to get hit, and you've got to know how to carry it. And Here they come for their field goal. quarterback scrambled out two or three times yesterday. We were getting pressure upfield, and he found a little old crease and get in there. They're at the 17 now. That's, uh, I, I believe that was a third and seven play, and it looked like to me they were just running it to get in the middle of the field with it. 
No, that was first down, and they, we hit them for a loss, and then uh, <laughs> hold them on three downs here. This is third and seven coming right here. Now, this is when they center it up. Right. That's the um, tailback, and he gets it right in the middle of the field, and there's Nate and Tracy and Georgia Quint boys, Quentin Riggins, and they go out front right there, 10 to 7. And, uh, you know, Phil, we don't play Georgia Tech anymore, but I can assure you one thing. I think Georgia Tech, I don't think I know Georgia Tech's football program is in great hands with Bobby Ross and his staff. Boy. That team has come together. That came together yesterday. Well, they, they are, they are a better football team than they were early in the year, yeah. and, and, and great, they had a great plan yesterday. We got the ball down to the 20-yard line here, and again, we don't get any points out of it. And, it's one of those things we can't, uh, you know, we, we've got to get it in the end zone. And again, it's, a, it's either Georgia Tech is, is a lot better as Kurt Crane and, and uh, Alan Mitchell. And <coughs> I thought that was a great football play right there that uh, was called pass interference. And Greg Staples tipped Greg the ball. Greg Staples hit the guy and the ball went up in the air and Robert Goff intercepted it. And, as Benji Rowland, and I think Benji must have played one of his finest football games yesterday. There's, again, pressure, and ball is tipped up in the air by Craig Ogletree. Third and eight coming. There's Tracy Rocker getting pressure and big, big play. Because at this point in time right here in the game, I mean, the game's on the line and we're behind. Darwin gets it with field position now. <coughs> so we take it. Jeff does. We... Makes a nice first down. Second and ten at the 42 coming here. We take it down and, get, and, and uh, good, get it down close, plenty close enough to kick the field goal. And again, you know, we don't, we don't make it. So here comes not a real good exchange here. Well, you know, we have those occasionally. And I mean, that's uh, a part of it. But again, wind's been perfect all year. And here comes the drive. We've made seven yards, and this is a third and three situation. And and uh, or second and three, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Jeff hits Lawyer Tillman. First and drops ten the ball here. off to to big key first down right there. And that that play right there stops the clock. We're working against the clock and working against time. And second and four. And Jeff is doing a great job. There's Scott Bolton. Second and fifteen coming and now. Scott got uh, I think a slight concussion yesterday. He hits Vincent Harris again. He gets out of bounds, stops the clock. does a great clock. job of getting out of bounds. Here's fourth and five. This is a key play. This is just like the Alabama drive yesterday and uh, last year. And it was one of those things where it's do or die. As a hit on, on Scott where he got the concussion, it, was just a, it looked like a good, clean leak. It was just, just a great, catch great by play a right here. <coughs> Coming down the wire. Just going to lawyer and Alexander Wright turning in down here now. Big play right here. Gets the ball at the three and a half yard line and it was a uh, two shots in the end zone for Tillman. As a uh, we had uh, threw it twice, threw it three times to lawyer I guess and and uh, once to Duke and third and four, four now. If you if you miss here, you got to kick the field goal. The uh, Jeff said to a lawyer, I guess one of them said the defender had his back turned to Jeff and didn't really see the ball being thrown. And uh, Jeff said they got out of our contact and he just threw it high and let a lawyer go up and get it. And he threw it <coughs> to the right guy. What a play. <coughs> what a play. What execution. This is, um, game's still not over. There's 24 seconds left on the clock and I think that got it down to 22. Next. Strong pulls the ball down and scrambles in, right, there. right, and and uh, guy makes a big game, gets the ball down to the 40 yard line where he can actually throw it into the end zone from there, and they've got nine seconds Nate left. Nate Hill coming now. Watch the left hand. Nate gets up, tips the ball up in the air, and Andre intercepts it, and you know the game's over now. I mean, it's, but that's uh, icing on the cake for a big day for that guy right there. <laughs> As a happy Auburn fan, and we had a lot of great fans at the ball game yesterday, and it uh, certainly made a difference in our efforts to stay in the game and come from behind. And and the um, and again, 
still, you know, I think that uh, total players, <coughs> you know, if we'd have gone out there and won 30 by 30 points, that's what probably everybody expected. But uh, to be in a, <coughs> a situation like we were in and take the ball and, and move it 91 yards in the final minutes of the game and not have any mistakes, uh, turnovers, uh, stop ourselves, and, and just the, the things that you that you want to see in a football team and things that they can learn from the game were all present in that drive. They certainly were. We'll be back in just a minute. Hey, good morning. And it's a good morning for you to call Alpha. Hmm. Call Alpha? Here's your paper. Some people need to be constantly reminded to call Alpha and compare auto insurance rates. Morning, Dad. Hi, Dad. Call and compare. You'll probably save money. All right. I'm going to call Alpha, and I'm going to compare rates. <laughs> hey, that means we can cancel the marching band and the Sky Rider. <laughs> call Alpha. When Jimmy Rain of Great Southern Wood asked me to endorse his product, Osmos, I said, heck yes. And here's why. Coach, let me tell you why Osmos is the best. We start with the finest quality southern pine timber. Osmos is the purest wood preservative in the world, 99.9% .9 pure. We give a 40-year warranty with every piece of wood we treat, and that's the best guarantee you can get. Osmo, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest snack company, Golden Flake. Just go anywhere Golden Flake snacks are sold and fill out your entry form. Imagine cruising to an Auburn game in your specially customized football van, the War Eagle. And the lucky fan who wins shouldn't be too surprised. Auburn fans are used to winning. Van, courtesy of Edward Chevrolet and Custom Creation Vans. Stillwater's Resort on Lake Martin. Still the best place to be in Alabama. The official resort of championship gold. The most important thing Auburn did for me was to introduce me to quality people people who were good role models. Auburn gave me lasting and meaningful friendships. Let's face it, Auburn folks are great. An Auburn moment from the Auburn Alumni Association. Back to Jordan-Hare next Saturday, homecoming with Mississippi State. You can still get those three game books, a few of them. Get them this week for Mississippi State, Florida, and Florida State. And join us here next week for the Auburn Football Review. Who don't want help? Call the Humana Hospital Family Recovery Program, 277 Live. You sure look comfortable. Oh, I am. This is heaven. It's so warm and relaxing. This house will sleep in our waterbed. Does it really? A waterbed from MacLendon Furniture will make you feel relaxed all over. It really does. You're right. Oh, it's so warm and soothing and comfortable. Try sleeping on a waterbed. It's wonderful. From Mac London Furniture, it's what sleeping comfort is all about. Well, it may not be in the cards for the cards to win the series this year, but rain is in the cards for Alabama in a fortune kind of a way. Although it's not fortune, it's the weather. We do have some rain coming. Right now at Danley Field, mostly cloudy skies. The temperature 56 and the winds are calm. Dew point of 49. Relative humidity 77%. Barometer dropping. No rainfall at Danley Field. In the Next week's a mighty big week for us all. Uh, football team, the year. Uh, it's a game that is, uh, you can start from right now getting your 60 minute plan. It'll be a, it'll be a war on every down. Every snap will, will have a significance bearing on the game. Uh, so again, enjoy today, uh, the occasion. 
remember who you are and and uh, remember what we got in front of us next week. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Foods, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Bill Snow. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. What a fun day on the plains yesterday. Homecoming and a 38-7 win over Mississippi State. Uh, I can't remember a more fun day at, at Auburn, Coach. Well, I think that, uh, you know, we had no idea the game would come out like it did. You know That helps. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, was a, it was a fun day. We got to play a lot of people, and a lot of young folks contributed uh, a great deal to the game that hadn't had the opportunity to play. Um, and the folks from St. Joe, the alumni band, the, you know, all the festivities. It was a, it was a fun day, and uh, the weather was pretty. Just not a lot you can complain about. The only thing I can complain about would be the punt return to put the ball on the three-yard line, which we, which is our best picture all day, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, uh, your young guys came on. Uh, Reggie Slack comes in for uh, for Jeff and does a good job. Your young running backs play well. Well, it didn't surprise me. The, uh, what you saw yesterday is a result of a lot of hard work on those youngsters' part. And, uh, I had sensed that they were getting close to being ready to play, and, uh, and they played well. They all passed the test. They sure did. And we will see uh, much of the test passing coming up in just a minute, but now let's go into the dressing room and talk to some of those young men who played so well yesterday. <coughs> How long did you know you'd be the starter? Uh, yesterday. What did you try to do? What, what, what was going through your mind? I tried to go out and uh, just perform like I knew I could, you know, just play like I play in practice and just take what they give me and shoot and fire. And, uh, He's, he's got a strong arm, and, uh, you know, I, I thought he set his, set his feet well today. You didn't see him dancing around, or, and he got hit a couple of times. That was good, Phil. You know, he, he got banged really good one time when somebody didn't pick up somebody and hit him in the backside. But, you know, it didn't phase him. He got right up and was a man about it, so pleased with that. I had been going with the first group all week, and it had been rumors that I was going to start, but the coach actually came to me and told me I was going to start about five minutes before game time. So you all worked all week to get ready to run the football. You knew you were going to run it today, right? Uh, yes, something like that. We, we came in and something had an like intention. That, huh? Something <laughs> like that. We came in with intention on running and proving something and seeing what we have. So we really came and, you know, we did what we had to do to win, which is the first obligation of us, anybody. After seeing all that in the paper when we played Georgia Tech, uh, and we didn't have a running game, so Coach Dye, Say it, you know, we're going to show them, you know, we can run the ball and throw the ball. How do you feel about getting some playing time? Well, Vincent got hurt in the first half, and I knew that was going to give me an opportunity to, to go out and help the team. And I just feel good Coach Stock gave me the chance to contribute today. So it was just a quick good game, and now let's get ready for Florida. In this That's game. right. That's what the coach will be working tomorrow. We'll be getting ready. We'll probably watch the film tomorrow. And come, mo come Monday, everybody be ready. It's going to be a dead serious week. Running against uh, Florida's front won't be the same as running against states, but... Uh, not, not very much, you know. Uh, Florida's defense is really good. Got something to prove from last year, too. The lob was just right on the money, wasn't it? Well, you know, that's something we've been working at all week with uh, with the quarterback. So we just got out there and ran our routes, and uh, Slack came up with a great throw. So when I came on, he kind of thrown the ball behind the tight end. So I just, the ball was kind of low. I just tried to make sure I hold on for it. Well, it was a big play, too, because you all needed to get something going. Right. right. Yeah, it was a big play. It gave the offense good field position, so they taking it in the score. I know about all the tackles and the interception for a touchdown and all that, but I know you want to talk about that block. Well, uh, we take pride, in, especially this week, on the special teams, because we talked about punt return all week, and the first guy getting down there had to uh, crack back on the guy. 
and I just caught him blindside, and it was uh, it felt real good. But they got us back on Steve Brown one time today, so I guess we're even. That wasn't that wasn't <laughs> Steve when they, huh? they got mad with you and hit Steve. Yeah, they asked him, coach. <laughs> I don't care what Nate said. I, I make the sack. I got that first. I, I, well, I laid on I got, top. I got so that first. Mine. You know, <laughs> my time. Whoever got that first knocked the win out of him. The other one knocked the win back in him. So I could say I got that first knocked the win out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a half a set. <laughs> Colonial Bank has a great way to show your Auburn spirit. The Auburn Spirit Cards. Anyone can apply for an Auburn Spirit MasterCard or Visa at a 15.5 annual percentage rate. The annual fee is $12, but there's no fee for Auburn Alumni Association members. Every time you use your cards, the Alumni Association benefits. Show your Auburn spirit with Auburn Spirit Credit Cards. Get all the details at Colonial Bank. Some people just can't remember call Alpha. to call Alpha and compare auto insurance rates. Cheese call Alpha. Call Alpha. Call your Alpha insurance agent and compare. Call Alpha. You'll probably save money. You know what? Oh, uh, what's that, dear? I'm gonna call Alpha and compare rates. All right. When Jimmy Rain of Great Southern Wood asked me to endorse his product, Osmos, I said, heck yes. And here's why. Of course, let me tell you why Osmos is the best. We start with the finest quality southern pine timber. Osmos is the purest wood preservative in the world, 99.9% .9 pure. We give a 40-year warranty with every piece of wood we treat, and that's the best guarantee you can get. Osmos. The best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Homecoming, what a day. 79,000 plus uh, on hand, and uh, boy. I find it hard for if you were an Auburn person yesterday not to have a good time. Look at the kids and yeah. the girls and the boys and the men and the ladies and the grandma. Those are the hard. students from St. Joe there, and that's the mascot. That's the Hulk. Huh? Yep. Yeah. I haven't seen the Hulk. But that. I met with them yesterday at 8 o'clock in the morning for kind of a brunch when they got in from <coughs> the Perry Reed field the first kickoff and has a great return back out to the 41-yard line and got hit out of bounds right there. And <coughs> no flag. He dropped it off, and this is where Vincent uh, hurt his knee a little bit. We don't really know the extent of it. He, you know, he just kind of got a glance and blow. I hope it's not too serious, and we don't think it is. Auburn can't it's move. and uh, Good coverage right here. And we get them backed up and make something the, def happen. the defense uh, comes up with a big play and a turnover. Edward Phillips right here on a, on an interception gives the ball to the 15-yard line. And Harry Moses takes it in on the first play from scrimmage. Just kind of bounces outside. And that's just uh, back keeping his feet alive and, you know, not uh, just keeping active and... Not any running room inside. They do a good job playing the play. He just hits in there and, like I said, keeps his feet alive and bounces to the outside and runs it in. Virtually untouched, really. And uh, Big play on the ground game. It's been a while. Isn't it? <laughs> it gave us a... It sure, it sure gave us a, a quick momentum in the game. And we come right back and have excellent coverage right here. And they get a call for a clip and they get backed up again. That was very important uh, <coughs> for the young quarterback to have some success. Right, we early. we uh, we get the ball back in good field position uh, the second time, and it was a great play by Tracy Rocker and uh, Ron Stallworth. And that's Kurt. That's Freddie. Freddie had surgery last week, and it's going to be out four or five weeks. And here's a play uh, that uh, great protection, right? A good block by Stacy Damon. Look at that. And, and, Phil, I can't say enough about our offensive line. I, I really haven't talked to the offensive coach. I don't know how they're great. Here's a great play of pass to the lawyer and just regulate it right over the outstretched hands of that defensive back. And it looks like we got two receivers right there together. And, and lawyer actually ran a little further across the field. You know, look, at the, look at that. Isn't that something? That is Herb Waldron, the <laughs> offensive trainer. You don't see He's much the, of him. I can assure you one thing, he's a favorite of all the players. I'm telling you. And uh, he's got, does a great job for us and got. He's just honest, Coach. You know? well, he's just unbelievable honest. Uh, relationship with the players and the confidence that they have in him. Fine play by Quentin Riggins. He had some tackles yesterday. 
<laughs> he did and made some great plays. There's a tip ball by Kurt Crane and intercepted by Craig Staples. <clears throat> and that's, uh, I believe, Craig's uh, fourth interception. Right. I thought Mississippi State did a good job yesterday in a, you know, a lot of areas as far as the offense is concerned, trying to, you know, take advantage of their talent, and, and uh, they just had the turnovers that hurt them, and, but uh, I think Rocky Felk was doing a fine job, and he'll get that pro back. Oh. This is, uh, I, to me, the best part of the game yesterday. We had first and 34 at one time in this drive, and we come back and, and make, the, make the first down out to the 50-yard line. And, Reggie Slack did a great job of executing. We ran a draw and threw it to Lawyer one time, came back and hit Alexander Wright. Now we're in the second quarter. <coughs> that was a good pressure pass. By, good pressure by Nate Hill, and, and I don't know what that was, really. Uh, excellent return here, and you can see Kurt Crane's block there is Kevin Porter. Just in the edge right of your there. And great job of not clipping right there, just holding back Andre Bruce downfield right there in front of Duke can uh, Duke, have a great return. Duke knew sh he should have cut back inside, didn't he? <coughs> Harry Mose and the speed right there of the young running backs was very evident yesterday and uh, being able to take a short gain and, and make a little more out of it. And uh, again, Harry's running. And, and Harry was the first back that we've had this year that went over. It was an excellent play, and, and uh, Mississippi State actually had a busted assignment there. But, they had uh, both of their deep guys uh, covered right. the covered the short zone, and, and uh, that can happen when you're on the road and the noise and <coughs> communication. And but anyway, Reggie hits uh, Alexander Wright, and he's behind all of them, and nobody's going to catch him. So it was 21 to nothing, and playing good and having a lot of fun. And there's Ron Stallworth and. Greg Ogletree and Quentin Riggins and Robert Goff. <coughs> Pressure always running. A near great play right there by Perry Reed. Perry played right there. As I was, some of our old, some old walking wounded. Right. Um, <laughs> Reggie Barlow and uh, Frank Thomas. And you can see he's running the reverse here. Excellent play, excellent call. Alexander's got speed. And, Look at that offensive line come off the of football. Mm. Stacy, Stacy Dunn and Rodney Garner and, and nice to have a pair of as two, as two pairs of fresh legs this time of year. <coughs> well, we we rested them as best we could yesterday. There's another excellent shot of Rob Selby. Good hole there. There's uh, glad Alexander. I mean Alex Strong got a chance to play yesterday, and here's the great throw and catch on the part of Reggie Slack and, and Lawyer Tillman. And Watch how perfectly this ball is laid up. Yeah, you do, you, it, it's a very, very difficult pass to defend. The, the, you know, the defensive back is actually at the mercy of the, of the quarterback making a bad throw mm -hmm. because if it's thrown right, and it's just so hard to break up. 28 nothing Auburn at the half. We'll return in a moment. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest snack company, Golden Flake. Just go anywhere Golden Flake snacks are sold and fill out your entry form. Imagine cruising to an Auburn game in your specially customized football van, the War Eagle. And the lucky fan who wins shouldn't be too surprised. Auburn fans are used to winning. Van, courtesy of Edward Chevrolet and Custom Creation Vans. Auburn and Coca-Cola, take one. Does anybody know you at the bank? At Colonial Bank, we believe banking is a people business. Here in Clanton, and in every office from Huntsville to Mobile, Colonial Bankers are local people. We want to get to know you, to serve you better. Bank at Colonial and bank with someone you know. Pat, Doc. It's a great feeling. Colonial Bank. 
there's an old friend in your neighborhood. Call Alpha. A friend that everyone's talking about. Call Alpha. Call Alpha and compare your auto insurance rates. Alpha. Hmm. Call Alpha. You'll get good coverage, excellent claim service, and you'll probably save money. I think I'll call Alpha. Call Alpha. Well, if you're Auburn, you needed to be at Auburn yesterday. There were musical memories, there was a new queen, and there was a meeting of the North and the South. Steve Beverly has the story. The morning began with the arrival of more than 100 students from St. Joseph's University in Pennsylvania who have adopted Auburn as their football school. Later, the crowning of Aaron Evans as Miss Homecoming. But the highlight of it all, the first ever Auburn alumni band. They came from several states, 362 strong. Nostalgia fell like raindrops during rehearsal in the Goodwin Music Hall. I've been wanting to do this for 20 years, ever since I graduated, and I have been so excited for a year, I can hardly stand it. Most of these marchers had little trouble picking up their steps at the practice field. We even found a father-daughter-granddaughter combination, which has Auburn band roots dating back to 1948. Fantastic. I just wish I could keep up with them. <laughs> then the moment of truth, stepping onto the Jordan-Hare turf, and the magical moment when former director Bodie Hinton conducts the alma mater. John Hamilton, class of 61, still plans to have War Eagle played at his funeral. But after all these alumni memories, would he change his mind? No. <laughs> <laughs> no way. For the Auburn Football Review, this is Steve Beverly reporting. Coach, after all that rehearsing and then a performance on the field, I understand there was a run on Ben Gay in the Auburn Open <laughs> area yesterday about 5 o'clock. I don't know about that, but I, I, I did have the opportunity to stand in the tunnel coming out uh, at the half, back out on the field, and listen to him play the, the uh, alma mater, and it was, I mean, it was really kind of an emotional thing, and uh, I just, uh, whoever came up with that idea is a great one, and we need to continue it, and, and the thing that... Uh, because we've had great high school bands in our preseason of early games when the students are not in session, but I'm not so sure that we don't need to invite that alumni band back to... I'm telling you. And the thing is, the game worked in such a way, Kurt gets the interception early and the game is 35 nothing, and then everybody kind of relaxes and has a big time. It well, it, uh, it, I, I guess it makes it a lot more fun. They had Stacy Searles and Stacy Dunn and, and uh, John Hudson. <coughs> and again, I can't... Uh, as a, that guy just has a knack of getting in the way of the football, doesn't he? Second week in a row, he scored. It's like, it's like some of these interceptions he makes, he's invisible. The quarterback can't see him. <laughs> he said, I don't know what he said. You know what he said? He said, I could have gone 80 yards. Right. I don't think he could have gone. As, I doubt uh, it. <laughs> fine play by Alvin Mitchell. We got to, we playing a lot of folks now and, and uh, playing good. There's uh, Hal Clemmer. Playing defensive end, and they take it down and, and, uh, and move the ball a little bit right there, and we we uh, get the turnover. It was caused by Edward Phillips and Benji Rowland, and Carlo Cheatham made the play. As Reggie Ware running inside, tough too. <coughs> Scott Bolton came back, and made a nice catch yesterday, and uh, glad he could even come back. Have a couple of missed tackles right there. It's a good block on part of Mississippi State, and we just got a breakdown and. Man, that's, this is terrible here. I don't know. I just uh, have great effort on the part of uh, Kevin Porter right there to keep him from scoring. But Watch this goal line stand now. For well, we, we do. We, we come back, and there's a fine play right here. That guy goes airborne, and this guy's throwing the bodies around and try to keep him out of there. And same thing on the next play. <coughs> right here, he... Drives to go up and <laughs> as Kurt Crane and, and uh, Greg Staples and Andre Bruce and Tracy, and Tracy Rocker and, and Craig Ogletree and 
They say he dented the plane of the end zone. I'll tell you what, he didn't put much of a dent in it. They didn't think so. The men in blue didn't. So State gets on the board there. Now we're in the fourth quarter. There's a Reggie throwing to Alex Strong and <coughs> Alex Strong and Harry Mose and it looked like a good block, a good hole up inside right there. Harry does a nice job of running. Get to see all the young running backs on this sequence now. They'd... Alex Strong and and, and uh, Harry Mose and Stacy Danley and Joe McNeil and Chris Knapp comes in, kicks the field goal. Some of those offensive yarder. linemen in there are a direct result of our Monday afternoon scrimmages because we have had some wars out there on Monday afternoon mm -hmm. whether it's there's uh, David Rocker and Fernando Horn and Quentin Riggins again I tell you what if uh, the ball stays in bounds Quentin will get around there's a good pressure right there make a tackle we didn't really tackle that well yesterday I didn't think him and, and, uh, and but Probably a result of us not putting the pads on all week long and just missed that work fundamentally for us tackling is concerned. Frank well, McIntosh. Frank McIntosh throwing the screen to Stacy Danley. Stacy really gets hit Ooh. right there. Boy, that was a vicious lick. Mm. Mm. <coughs> Glad that Frank got an opportunity to play. And um, you know to Coming back and Stacy again and giving a little movement and a little crease here and there and moving the football and he's a tall that's, rangy. We had 209 yards rushing yesterday, I think, and and, and uh, 208 yards passing, and, and that's the kind of balance that we'd like to have. And uh, there's a result of you know that's not Frank's fault. That's a result. I think it was Harry Moe's fault, to be honest. I think, but it's a result of. To not get enough polish. <coughs> As uh, Hal Clemmer and, and uh, Steve Brown <coughs> interception by D'Amico Anderson. There's John Wiley and Eric Ramsey and Perry Reed. That's a lot of folks who had an opportunity to play and made it a happy homecoming for. You know, they all work just as hard as the guys that go out there and play every week and don't have the opportunity to play. And they've got mamas and daddies and girlfriends and whatever that want to see them play and as much as anybody. So I, it was a it was a good day for a football team. I think that I really think that we grew a little bit yesterday, Phil. And the, <coughs> the circumstances that that uh, the game was played under with with Jeff Berger and, and uh, Jim Thompson that. Uh, you know, I thought that the team pulled together and probably rose, uh, grew a little bit as, as a team and as individuals. Adversity and, does that, doesn't right. it? Right. Uh, that's American way. When the, the tougher times get, the tougher, you know, people have to get. And Let's come I, back and talk <coughs> about Florida just a moment, Coach. I think you're really going to like this house. It's a new style we call the ranch. The sun deck is a... Hey, Mom, this is Janice. Cool, how? Come on, buddy, wanna see Grandma? Let's go see Grandma. Watch your step there, Mama. Luther, I've been walking up and down these steps for 40 years. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football machine free from the world's greatest snack company, Golden Flake. Just go anywhere Golden Flake snacks are sold and fill out your entry form. Imagine cruising to an Auburn game in your specially customized football van, the War Eagle. And the lucky fan who wins shouldn't be too surprised. Auburn fans are used to winning. Van, courtesy of Edward Chevrolet and Custom Creation Vans. Waters Resort on Lake Martin. Still the best place to be in Alabama. The official resort of championship gold. 
Even though I'm just beginning my career, I already know how important my Auburn education is going to be. Just knowing Auburn people is a real plus. There's a kinship there, and that's unique to Auburn. An Auburn moment from the Auburn Alumni Association. Remember the day he filled in for Bo and scored three touchdowns? <laughs> well, he's an outstanding young man. That, uh, he was a great leader for us and solid player, a solid person in our program. Well, we're at the point now that you knew we would uh, eventually get to the four-game run against all great, strong, physical football teams. Well, this is, uh, you know, this is the next four games is going to be what uh, Auburn is remembered for. It's just that simple. They're going to forget the rest of them. And uh, what we do from here in, and, uh, you know, that's the way it is every year. And I call it Amen's Corner. <laughs> it guess, is. I Amen, guess, Coach I Amen. from Augusta, Georgia, and <laughs> seeing those people falter around <laughs> Amen's Corner on Sunday. And, uh, of course, we got, uh, we always have Florida, Georgia, and Alabama to end the season. And this year we were smart enough to go ahead and insert Florida State in there. And they just got the best team that <laughs> they've ever had done. <laughs> you have the but, uncertainty of the <clears> F and all that to deal with this week. I, I like his football team. Bill, and I think that uh, what happened yesterday, we can can uh, grow from it and be a better team because of it. And um, you know, I, I, we just we have nothing to do now but just go in there and see what you know, see what we are. Um, I really, you know, I, I know the people are worried and thinking about uh, Jeff and Jim Thompson's situation, and I really don't know a great deal other than the fact that I don't think it is a serious violation there. And uh, think you'll would, something early in the week. I think we'll try to find out something as early as we can, and and uh, we should uh, we should know something early in the week. And I would I really would expect to have them back next week. Okay, it's Auburn, Florida, the big one next week. Uh, if you don't have a cable, find somebody with it so you can see the game. If you don't have a ticket, and we'll be back with the replay of it next week. Thank you for joining us today. I don't, uh, I don't recall us really ever playing a, a better football game. Sure, we had a, you know, we had maybe one breakdown, but uh, to, tonight, tonight, men, is, is, what you, is what you strive for and, and getting the total oneness on a football team, offensively, defensively, and the specialty team. That's what we've been trying to get all year long. And, of course, it came together tonight. I'm mighty happy for you, and I'm proud of you. And, and it's, a, it's a big, big win. It's a big win for you, and one that you'll remember a lifetime. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye, brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Food, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Phil Snow. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The largest crowd ever to see a football game in Alabama last night saw a good one. Auburn 29, Florida 6. Coach, it was uh, well, it was an all-timer in a few respects. Well, it was a great football game from an Auburn standpoint, that's for sure. And there's a lot of things in the game that were very significant as far as winning a football game like that. Um, you know, our crowd was unbelievable, and and uh, thought that the fans, you know, did their part. Thought our coaching staff did a great job, and and 
having the kids ready to play with the game plan. And, Were they ready? Uh, we did th some things a little different than what we had done, and, and all of it worked. And, of course, the players themselves came together with the total oneness that you got to have to win a football game like that, and that's what, uh, that's what makes me so happy when you get them all playing with the same heartbeat. Field position is <coughs> very important in the game. Florida? Never, you know, we, we, we just, every time they got the ball, it seemed like they had the whole length of the field to go. And the, and the play of our specialty teams probably was as, as big a factor in the ball game as, as the offense or the defense. And, they, and again, that's what we've been trying to get all year long, but we hadn't managed to get that. They started the 20, the 19, the 4, the 6, <coughs> the 18, the 6, and the 17 in the first half. That's well, uh, you know, in all phases of the kicking game, uh, the little, little punt of the field goal kicking, the coverage, uh, the, you know, everything worked, uh, and uh, it was just uh, a great football game. Let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of the players beginning with that offensive line. They beat us every year. Uh, us singers have been playing three years in a row. And there's one we wanted real bad and one we worked for real bad. So, you know, hard work paid off. Who said Auburn's going to run the football? Everybody. But, you know, hopefully just keep it up. We've got a long road ahead of us. You know, this is a sweet victory, but we've got to get going some more. You were up against the Tiger tonight. Uh, Ross, one of the best. Slowly, somehow, you all found a way to run the football. Though, wasn't you? Well, we got we got stronger as the game went on. He's a, he's a great player. I can't say nothing bad about him. I think tonight, you know, we, we, we came uh, what I call champions. We, we mold together. Everybody, instead of playing as individuals, we all play as one unit. And uh, I'm looking forward to next week in Florida State to see how see if we can come closer together. You found a way to run it tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just please, please, I can be it like Stacey Danley. I think Stacey did a tremendous job running the ball tonight. He and Harry Moe. Was the key having a lot of people around him at all the time? Yeah, that's the main key coming in the ball game was the game tackling. We knew if he just stuck out an arm, he'd break it. But uh, we knew if he took five or six hitting him in the face every time that he couldn't do that. I wonder, I want to know how many yards he had because they were telling all defense that they didn't think we could hold him under 100 yards, and I believe we did. I think they re realized that um, Evan wasn't going to get anything, and then all of a sudden they started throwing the ball to him. And as you know, they just went to throwing, and they, you know, everybody forgot about him and started thinking about throwing. Does this kind of help all those long hours of rehabilitating that knee, Florida boy? <laughs> uh, quite a lot. Uh, it's a, it makes me feel a little bit better. Um, so, uh, and Tracy just got these saying, uh, we can't celebrate too much because next week we got another one from that's dying the out pain of, of this thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to part of life. Getting one off, you got another one to face, too. Yeah, those guys scored 72 points tonight, so that's going to be a load. Tonight. So I heard, um, we'll, I'm sure we'll have our hands full again on defense, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to contain them. So when we went down in, in uh, 84, we had them in the full quarter. They got us in the full quarter. The 85, when they came up here, they all, and they got us in the full quarter. And last year, they got us in the full quarter. So this year, we, we preach and we work hard and say we're going to win the fourth quarter, which we did this year. One thing wasn't working, so they went to the next thing, and it turned out we had to prepare for that too, so. How did you limit Emmett? We were just getting more than one person to the ball. We were getting five, six, seven, eight people to the ball. Lots of effort. You know what's terrible, though? Florida State scored 72 points tonight. You can't, you don't have long? Hey, no. Nah. Show them. We already think about Sammy Smith. Yeah. That's another Smith yeah. coming in here. <laughs> <laughs> you slowly found a way to run the football. Well, the offensive line did a great job by keeping on and pounding them and pounding them. And, you know, the backs did a great job of uh, running hard. And they took a lot, of, a lot of hard licks out there today. And they ran hard. And uh, they deserved every yard they got. And, uh, but slowly in the third and fourth quarter, I think the, the week, preparation of last week really helped us out a lot. Um, by, left. That's right. I mean, in the fourth quarter, we had uh, we had a lot left, I feel like, and uh, we met the challenge that we had to offensively. Hey, good morning. And it's a good morning for you to call out. A lot of hot goblins. I guess the goblins were out, weren't they? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. You know, I didn't realize it until yesterday, and of course, I was sick all night Friday night, and Brett, my... You don't look too good now, Coach. Yeah, you know, well, I feel a lot better. <laughs> but my second son, Brett, came in Saturday morning and said, Daddy said, you know, the last time we beat Florida was Halloween night back in 83. And I said, well, maybe that's a good time. I don't know about <coughs> Halloween night at Auburn, Coach. I tell you, it was some tough sledding out there early in the game. And if we hadn't been able to throw the football a little bit, I don't think we'd have moved it at all. But uh, as the game went on, we got stronger and stronger with the running game. And, of course, mixing the passing game in there with it. And that guy right there did an unbelievable yeah. job last night. Not a, a lot of average, but <coughs> a great kick. 
Well, they never, they didn't have one yard in return. And uh, he kicked the ball high and he just did a great job. Big play. Well, here's uh, Tracy Rocker reaches in and knocks the ball loose and it then gets on it. And <coughs> I don't know, 17 bonus points right there. It's causing, causing a fumble and fumble recovery. But uh, Tracy played a great football game. Had a lot of individual stars last night, and you always do. That's one of them right there, two of them, really. That was Jeff one of many third, third <coughs> down conversions, too. There were nine third down conversions for Auburn this game. Thought we were a little tight early in the ball game field, and, and uh, just as the game went on, we got better. <coughs> lawyer, Jeff throwing the fade to Lawyer, and, and uh, we ended up getting a field goal out of it and go out front three to nothing and early on. And here's a play of our specialty teams. And Chris Johnson did a great job of kicking, and then that guy fielded it and stepped out of bounds at the four. And, he just could keep them backed up the whole first half and fine play by Tracy and <coughs> you're going to see some shots in here with Emmett where a lot of people hitting him and who made that play? Is that Robert Goff or yeah, yeah. Uh, Stallworth? I tell you, there's Quentin Riggins back in there with penetration and Ron Stallworth and, and uh, Hold him on Brian, the goal line. Brian Smith and so we, we, as a result of us keeping them back up, we ended up getting good field position and it's a great play and a great call by Larry Blakeman, and Pat Sullivan uh, running the takeoff, and Jeff did a good job of hitting Lawyer. <coughs> Florida can run. they got a great football team, and they hold us here, and we end up getting another field goal out of it. The refreshment comes. I don't know what those are, Coach. But, uh, I don't know either, but they were having a good time, and that's what's important, I guess. Bill can sprint. That's a, Near interception right there. Really played well by Kevin Porter. And We're in the second quarter now. This is a uh, third down play here. And the image just twists and turns. And you know, like I said, we sometimes the first guy is missing, but we had two taking his place. And they just, that's the only way you can play a great running back like that. Duke makes a good play here. Makes a long run to <coughs> feel, feel that ball and get field position again. That's four men sitting right there. Stallworth <laughs> and Benji Rowland, Nate Hill, and Andre Bruce. Florida gets caught with 12 people on the field here in, in a third down situation, keeps our drive alive for us. And this is third down right here, too. It's a great run right here by... Uh, oh, my goodness. Reggie Ware, and Reggie played his finest football game ever last night, and you can see we, that's the only play that Duncan Harris played, and, and I saw him limp up in there, and he just wasn't ready to play, and probably shouldn't even put him in after that one, but... Reggie got kind of stung a little bit, so we felt like we had to have a, a little rest in there. But again, the coaches had a great plan where we, we played a tailback and took Reggie out some. There's a great tackle by John Wiley and Smokey Hodge and Terry Reed and Elton Billingsley and then it's just a whole specialty team. You, this guy ran for his life all night long last night and <laughs> Andre and Tracy and just kept pressure on him, pressure on him. There was another fine play by Andre. Benji rolling out, looked like Benji played an outstanding football game. And scratching and clawing to get there. They, they take this one down there and get it down close, and then we hold them and they kick the field goal and make it a nine to three ball game. This is their longest. No, that's <laughs> not. The longest right completion that. of the uh, game is coming up. So right that here. little turn right, we had four folks around it, and it looked like we were going to come up with it, but the guy can throw the football. That was the nearest thing to a big play they had. That was um, <laughs> a flood route, and, and they hit the guy in the middle in the scene. Again, that pressure, we had somebody around him all night long. Second and goal. Which is a, is a major undertaking, and has Benji on his back. Big play. Andre and they have to kick the field goal. Robert McGinty kicks it through, and they get on the board <coughs> nine to three just before the half. Half time, it's a nine to three game. Auburn ahead. If you talk about the space program, chances are someone from Auburn is connected with it. Steve Beverly has a look at uh, a couple of Auburn's space pioneers.
know the thrill of seeing that which has never been seen before. In the early 60s, we embraced a changing age. John F. Kennedy represented youth. Perry Mason solved cases, and Beaver Cleaver was always in trouble. Three, two, one, and we have solid motor ignition and liftoff. Lift but a new challenge was ahead, space, and Auburn was meeting it. Friday was space day on the Auburn campus, a chance to hear from astronauts former and future about where they want to see us go next in space. Eventually, exploring Mars. Once we go to Mars, I don't want it to be a one-time trip like we made our first trip to the moon. I would like to see uh, Martian colonies. Well, I would like to go to Mars. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can borrow a line from Star Trek, going where no man has ever gone before. What, what would we do once we were there? I want to look around. I want to explore. <coughs> I want to see what's there. Retired Auburn physics professor Howard Carr has said Auburn's astronauts go beyond being good book students. They've taken us to the cutting edge of our capabilities an Auburn space connection which will continue into the 90s and beyond. For the Auburn Football Review, this is Steve Beverly reporting. Nine to three at the half, but uh, you still hadn't established any kind of ground game, and it, it seemed like uh, Florida was, you know, well, they had just, the upper hand. Well, I don't think they had the upper hand. We just, but I knew, <clears throat> too, that we had had great field position the whole first half, and I didn't know that that would continue throughout the ball game, but it did. And uh, it, without question, it played a great part in the game. And then the quick <laughs> turnover really helps with the win. Well, that's certainly that, 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 that space for what took place in the second half. The Auburn band pulled out all the stops. So. <laughs> well, the band does a great job every week. And they just, um, the fireworks and the festivities and families and friends on campus all day long and playing. It was a great day for, for Halloween. Carnival, I guess, is what they call it. They came early and they were hanging from the <coughs> rafters. Here's the big play now to open the second half. Elton Billingsley knocks the ball loose and, and uh, Steve Brown recovers it. <coughs> Those turnovers are making things happen on the kitchen. Man, that's important. Watch Billingsley get his arm in there and knock the ball away right here. That's a great football player right there, uh, Jerry Watkins. And has, uh, well, Lawyer does a great job right here keeping this ball from being intercepted, actually. He almost caught it, but uh, just breaking it up. Sometimes a defender, a pass receiver has to do that. Watch his hands right here. Oh. See, look, look at this other end zone shot of, of Lawyer's hands, big old, just to see how massive his hands are. And there yeah. might be a, some receivers around the country that catch more passes than him, but he's, a, he's the best wide receiver in America. I, and That's just for his everything. That was some more of that eye-to-eye -eye contact, too, between those two. They were you know, looking we, at one another the whole time. You can see a lot of folks in there, Nate Hill and Tracy Rocker, and as Kevin Porter getting in there, and Robert Goff and Kirk Crane and Edward Phillips. And <coughs> that was Greg Staples. Greg, now you're talking about a guy with courage. He played mm -hmm. the game with separated cartilage in his rib cage. Uh, he has, has, has a great shot of what it takes to, to play him in there. We had two missed tackles in Kevin Porter, but if you keep getting somebody there, eventually somebody's going to get him. Good penetration by Kurt Crane and Benji Rowland. He has to run around a pile up, and Benji Rowland makes a play on him. Trace Rocker, Rocker falls on him, and they kick the field goal, and it's 15 to 6. Emmett Smith had only 72 yards uh, on 21 carries. First time in, uh, I believe, seven games he's been held under 100 yards. This guy right here played a great football game last night and played a vitally important role Ooh, in our my. success. Stacy Danley running the football but catching it and, and blocking. And, and uh, without question, if, if he wasn't before last night, he became a man last night. And as Duke Donaldson has been so important to us and such a vital player for us all year long, the line is Reggie, firing off. Reggie, you can see this thing right here. And, and Reggie, again, played his finest football game ever last night. And I was so proud for him. I didn't know what to do. <clears throat> we fumble this one here. But we come back to, to, to score two later. Now, and this is in the fourth Robert, quarter. After Robert Goff them. got them backed up. And, uh, on the punt. Brian Schumann punted down there dead on about the two-and-a-half-yard line. And... That guy can throw the football, and there's Greg Staples and Andre Bruce, and we got people, look at them, this circle of wagons. 
Hey, Andre, pressure, pressure. Pressure. Hey, he comes again. <laughs> well, I guess. Staying after him. Staying after him, and hey, look at that. <laughs> and that guy's got two on him. <laughs> Good training, and uh, Nate Hill stood there long, and we needed for him to stand there that time, but Robert McGall finally got there and tripped him up. As Ron Stallworth, and, and it just takes an awful lot out of you when you have to rush that passer all night long. Ed's a, uh, Andre actually hit his arm right there, and there's a good shot of Stacy down there on the sideline. And as Jeff coming back and doing our thing. You're going to see some great to, running now. Going to, there's a great play right here. <coughs> I believe that was a, a <coughs> screen. Watch out, Vic. Clip screen, and on, uh, Lawyer Tillman had a great block on it. Has good blocking right there by Stacy Searles and Rodney Garner. And <coughs> the young man is coming into his own now, isn't he, Coach? Well, he's just, you know, he, he's, he's becoming, like I said, he's becoming a man. As Rodney Weston played with a broken jaw, you got to have a lot of respect for that. This was a big play. Down Went to down the to the one. <coughs> Harry Moses is going to score here. The blocks. The <laughs> blocks in there, they just... Oh, my. That's where you draw it up on the blackboard right there. 22 to 6, <laughs> but it's I still not over. I felt a little better along here, the way the defense was playing. And they come in, and the secondary has had to do a great job with Andre stacking again, and they get caught for intentional grounding, and Andre, I don't know whether he's celebrating or what. <laughs> We're scratching to get there. That's the throw it away. <coughs> throw it away and fourth and long. They give it up again in good field position. Now, here we go again. We had a nice little punt return in here somewhere. I guess we didn't get it on uh, Duke Donaldson. It was excellent field position. And, and that, was, there, that was, again, that was Stacy Danley. And well, look at the line blowing it back. It is mm -hmm. tough, sledding, and hard old football up there now. And this one right here just goes right in. And that's the result of just keep it on and keep it on and, you know. Fighting Florida, Florida had just been on the field too long on defense and, and um, it finally took its toll. As the guy still trying to win, Carlo Cheatham, last play of the game. His second interception of the year. Auburn has intercepted 17 balls now. And a big Might happy today on the side. There's a happy players and coaches and fans and been losing to Florida three straight times like we had. Not to do. Florida's got a great football team, but losing in the fourth quarter and the way the games have turned out had been a frustrating ordeal. 29 to 6 the final. We'll return in just a minute. I'm here to tell you how you can win the world's greatest football. Victory was it's just step one of Amen Corner, Coach. <laughs> well, you know, we've got a I think if anybody around the country that knows anything about college football looked at the way our season ended and uh, would say that that's the toughest stretch of football that anybody in the country is going to have to play in, at one time. And, uh, you know, there really wasn't a lot of celebrating in the dressing room last night still they were, because they were happy. And I think... Uh, they knew but, what they had facing. That's right. And I think that uh, we may be playing the best football team in the nation next week in Florida State, Coach Bowden early on said that this was his best football team ever. That's the way they played. And uh, I watched a game with Miami and Florida State. And Florida State should have, be, should have beaten them by two touchdowns. So uh, we'll have to have a great effort. We'll, I, I really think we'll have to play a lot better than we did last night. Maybe not a lot better, but I think we'll have to play better than we did last night. Put this one behind and <coughs> go for the next one. Hopefully we can, can get better from this last ball. It will be on CBS, and it will be an early afternoon start, which will be kind of nice. And uh, I'm sorry to say there are no tickets uh, remaining for the game. But uh, you join us here on Sunday for the replay of Auburn, Florida State, and join us each Saturday for the Auburn uh, Tiger football, which is a preview. We'll be previewing uh, the Auburn, Florida State game on Saturday. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Sharply downward, collapsed one or the other, as though smashed flat by a giant fist.
when you do the things you did tonight together, 11 at a time, playing with the same heartbeat, you know, it, it, great things can come out of that. It'd be a lesson you can live, you can, you can learn and live with as long, and be worthwhile to you as long as you live. <coughs> Again, I'm mighty happy for you, and I'm proud of you. It's a great win for you, but it ain't the biggest one of the year. Right. The Sugar Bowl is where we want to go. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Auburn and Georgia, the oldest college series in the Deep South. Yesterday's 27 to 11 win by Auburn evened it at 42 wins each and seven ties. And you've done more than your share, Coach. That was your fourth and seven try. Well, it's amazing that that series over the years is is uh, is as close as it is. And I didn't realize that that uh, until I read the David Housel you know, pregame stuff on it that uh, Vince, I think, was 11-11 and one going into the game, and we were three and three. And mm -hmm. but uh, you know, the the it's two great programs, and and uh, it's a tremendous football game and tradition and rivalry. And uh, I would imagine through the years it'll remain close. Auburn, Auburn will win their games, and Georgia will win theirs, and and. Uh, but it is, uh, it's what college football is all about. And it was a, just an unbelievable day for college football yesterday. And the Georgia people, uh, you know, they were, they were there in, in masses. And, and our faithful followers were there. And you could hear, you could hear ours when, the, when Auburn did things good. And of course, Georgia, it, it was a great day. And of course, you know, yesterday belonged to Auburn. And it was a day where the ball bounces uh, some funny ways sometimes, and it bounced our way yesterday. And, and your team was so <coughs> superbly prepared, Coach. Well, I, still, I, you know, our coaching staff, uh, you know, it, it had just did a tremendous job uh, offensively. Uh, James Daniels and Neil Calloway, Bud Casey and uh, Pat Sullivan and Larry Blakeney did a great job in preparing our offensive game plan for Georgia and and. Uh, Reggie Perrin and Joe Witt and Steve Dennis and, and uh, Wayne Hall did a great job with our defensive plan and, um, and then the kids went out and, and executed it and we didn't turn the ball over until the game was practically over at the, at the end. And, um, we played a game, we, if we hadn't had the two turnovers at the end, it would have been a game that would have compared certainly with the Florida game. And, mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, we're not a good enough football team to, to turn it over and beat ourselves, but we did make some mistakes. We had a uh, great play from our specialty teams and, and uh, really did. it was just a, it was a team effort completely. And uh, we had some, we, it was some things that was significant in the ball game, in my opinion. Uh, Stacey Danley and Reggie Ware played practically the whole football game until the late stages of the game. And both of them had been hurt a little in practice and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of fans and a lot of people don't understand what some of these players, uh, the sacrifices and the price yeah. they pay to go out there and play on Saturday. And, and uh, Stacy missed practice on Thursday. Yeah. <coughs> and they go out there and they display the kind of courage that, that, that he displayed last night. And, and to watch him grow and mature this year during the season, it, and, you know, early in the year, it, it just... Uh, I told his mama last night after the ball game, I said, Ms. Dan, I know you're proud of Stacy. She said, I sure am. I said, well, I've enjoyed watching him grow up. I said, it's amazing what a little patience and a little love and a lot of hard work will, will do for a kid at that stage in his life, and, but he's a man now. Indeed he is. Let's go in the dressing room now and hear from some of the players, many of them Georgia boys. About the interceptions, man. Well, I won't be a defense fan anyway, Sprouter. <laughs> now, it was designed for me to go out there on the, on the back when they, when they drop back like that. And he just didn't see me out there, I guess, and he throwed it to me. And he said, man, you were throwing that ball at me, huh? Yeah, and I didn't offer five, I caught it. <laughs> but we knew about what we were going to do on defense, and um, we just went out and tried to play the game that we, we had in us, and uh, we came out ahead on the scoreboard. How about these two young guys sitting next to you? What did they do? They did a great job today, and uh, I'm really 
real thankful that we got them on our team, and uh, Coach Hall didn't register them this year because they're a big addition to our defensive line. But I know you knew you had to go, son. Oh, well, I think yeah, that's why I prepared myself in the week in the following games. I'm trying to learn, you know, them how to run, and they, and they teach me the basic stuff. So I feel pretty good about going today. Well, you wanted to play with uh, Tracy, but you had to play for him today, son. Yeah, but it wasn't a bad experience. I mean, I hated that he had to get hurt for me to get an opportunity to play, but I would just have to just get in the action. Today. Where's, where's Tracy today? He's at home. He watched on television. Well, I guess he'll have some suggestions for you. When you yeah, I know. <laughs> Probably a thousand by the time I get home. I kind of bobbled it. And by me bobbling the ball up like that, they gave, they kind of got the defense off balance a little bit and, gave, and opened up a big hole so I can get there and get it. Uh, if I hadn't bobbled the ball, if I would have got it on time, I think I would have been tackled. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of pressure on me when I was getting recruited. And winning four out of five made my decision right. <laughs> I believe you're right. They went mad and I had came in motion. And then I, I told Jeff I was going to get between the linebackers and hook it up. And he made a good throw. He threw the ball low. And then I got down and caught it. Feel better after the, after last week? Yeah, you know, it's hard to come back after you hurt the team so bad in the week before. But I wanted to concentrate and work a little bit hard in practice and show them that I that I'm not that type of player, and I wanted to help him win. What happened was I was reading my tight end, you know, and he blocked down, and uh, I just had to come up and support. Unfortunately, I did a good job of doing it. It was just great timing, and I saw one of the blockers from the line come across, and I just tried to hide behind him, and once I got behind him, he gave me a great block, and I was the off to the race, and it was, it was wonderful. It was, just, it was nice. <laughs> Offensive line gave you all the time. Oh, they did great. I couldn't be any happier. Those guys really got after him, and um, running the football. I'm real proud of the way they blocked it up front, and the way Stacy ran, and Harry, and all the backs, Reggie, and you know, just all of them. I think it was a great night for us, and uh, like I said, I couldn't be any happy words. Can't tell you how I feel. I'm here to tell you how you stadium fell out proud. Neither team could move it on their first possession, and now we pick up with uh, Georgia on its second possession of the game in the first quarter. Well, uh, we chose to, to kick off in the ball game. Field and and uh, you never know where that's gonna, the reason we did though was, was we were going we really wanted to have that extra possession in the second half. Great now, Carlo Cheatham played a great football didn't game he? yesterday. Oh, didn't he? and uh, there's there's a near interception. I've given anything for for Kevin to have intercepted that one. He played great football against Georgia every time we played against them. And Little Duke, he had a, a play had a heartbreaking game against Florida State and came back and played his heart out yesterday. And uh, you're going to try to call nine balls. Uh, Phil and just played a tremendous part in our winning the football game. Certainly did. And until we got the ball game won, that guy right there was never better. He just, <clears throat> Jeff, I, on practice uh, Thursday, he was he threw the ball uh, somewhere between 50 and 80 is going to the lawyer and uh, what a great player in Rambo game. wiped him out <coughs> he threw that ball last year. Well you know a lawyer is uh he's getting double double and triple coverage and and uh I just hope that our people in this conference understand what he is and, and what makes all conference and ought to be all American. Great play by Carlos well, Cheatham. <laughs> and I think he's from Georgia coach. I, I tell you that guy right there is playing great football at free safety for us and play right there by Alvin Mitchell. Kurt Crane. He took that ball away from me. Kurt Crane. Thank well, you. he might have wanted it a little more. The uh, the the thing that uh, there's a guy right there. You just watch him, and he's man. He's come on and, and given us the second ability, of fame to drive. Ca ability to catch a football and. <coughs> Do all the things that tailback is our tailbacks have got to do. Third and five here, and he's a yard short. He's always falling forward, and and Georgia has got some talent, and that guy right there has got plenty of it himself. Quentin Regan played a great football game yesterday. Here you can see him sacking. Then uh, has a great freshman tailback Hampton, and you stop the <coughs> tailback play, coach. <coughs> the. Uh, Craig Ogletree played a great football game. As Nate and Benji Rowland and Ron Stallworth and Kurt Crane just keep coming and keep coming. There they are again. There's Quentin Riggins and 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 uh, Kurt Crane again. And I, uh, again, our defensive coaches had a great plan for them. And is this one right? No, this, that was they third stopped and long. That was third with that's 
It was a great I punt by Brian. And great coverage. <clears throat> they had uh, the top, top punt returner in the conference and top kickoff return people, and there's the specialty teams, the Elton Billingsley and Alvin Mitchell and uh, Smokey Hodge. And <clears throat> as Ron Stallworth tipped the ball up and that bounce went George's way. Kim Stevens, their fine offensive guard, caught it and picked up the key first down for him. They're down on as, the goal line, same drive. Tate, and there's a fine play by Andre, and... <clears throat> that was first down, this is second. They just... Third and seven the coming. Thing, the thing at, uh... At Perry Gogletree and Andre Bruce and Quentin Riggins, and they're having a good time playing the game. They kicked the field goal and, and made it seven to three. There's some Georgia fans. 2.53 left now as they kick the field goal in the half. This is the big drive. Great player the big out field there. Goal. Big first down for us coming off of our goal line. Jeff takes the ball and moves it right down the field. Hits Walter Reeves. Walter picks up a first down and gets the ball out of bounds. Second and ten coming here. That's <coughs> Jeff hits Duke. He makes a guy miss him. And he gets that. Watch, watch your boss hog right there. <laughs> Make that first down, Duke. <laughs> oh, me. Uh, As Stacy on a delay route. Boss has an interesting perspective. He gets to stand with the opposing players. Over well, there. He was a, he's a ball go boy on Georgia's mm -hmm. sideline. And, <laughs> and uh, I said the same thing. I don't know what that was there. I don't know if that was... Defensive interference, or offensive interference, and probably they called it right. They didn't call anything. And uh, when lie, we had what seven, four, seven seconds, seven seconds left, I believe. And and when kicked it through the, and, and it was a big drive and a and 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 set the stage very important for the yeah. because gaining momentum right before the half is very very important. Uh, going into that dressing room with a positive feeling, and and uh, that's the way we had it. The kids came in the dressing room, and Coach Callaway walked by me, and he said, Coach, I don't believe you're going to have to say anything to them. Get them ready to play the second half. <laughs> and they did, and we'll see the second half in just a minute. Some people just can't remember. Oh, Alpha. To call. have been to Auburn and have gone on to successful careers. Now Steve Beverly looks at some young scholars who are now at Auburn. He's a young man in a hurry with a goal and a bright outlook on life. Greg Smith is in his second quarter at Auburn. As an electrical engineering major, Greg learned as early as the fourth grade the tools it takes to be an A student. Prioritize and set your goals and simply say, uh, I've got an English paper due tomorrow and I'm gonna make sure it gets done and I'll stay up all night if I have to to get it done. Auburn's Four Union isn't just a place for food and fellowship. You may find Diane O'Brien of Selma studying. Diane says a history of teachers in her family has helped her become a top scholar, but she has another incentive. I've always wanted to be somebody and not just be one of the crowd, and you have to do well in school to make it and stand out above the rest. Auburn's director of admissions believes American colleges today are placing a much stronger emphasis on rewarding the quality student. You attract quality by having quality. And when you enroll outstanding students, it, it helps you to enroll additional outstanding students. So who's coming to Auburn? People like Greg and Diane, continuing a tradition of outstanding scholars. For the Auburn Football Review, this is Steve Beverly reporting. The momentum of the last drive carried over in the third quarter and you blew the game away. Uh, well, we had, some, we had some good breaks early in the third quarter and, and capitalized on them and um, I, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't have any idea how many points we scored in the ball game, or Georgia for that matter, but turnovers always uh, affect the score in a ball game, and that's what happened in our ball game yesterday. Great performance by the mm -hmm. Auburn band. <clears throat> they always do. Always get the scouting report on the band from Sue. She always enjoys watching them perform. What a beautiful setting that the Santa Station <coughs> is almost as nice as it is in well, it is a, it's a beautiful place, and they've got a lot of tradition there. And, and like I said, we, you know, Auburn and Georgia have been doing battle a long time. This is a big play here. Even. Harry Mose brings the kickoff back, breaks outside, and runs it back out to the 30-yard line. <coughs> and 
it's not going to take Stacey, long. Stacy down if they get a, a face mask penalty right here that, that helped us a little bit. It, uh, Five yard penalty it wasn't a big penalty, but this is third and four and a great inside fake. Great fake from Reggie Ware and as Harry and off and running and get it down to the five yard line. <coughs> Walter Reeves and a lot of folks down there. there. I really believe that if Harry had taken this one to the grass, then he could might could have put it in, but uh, he stayed with his blockers. But anyway, got it down to the five and. We don't make anything running in a couple of tries, and and then Jeff hits uh, Luke Donaldson for the touchdown right here. He was in motion and flipped inside. <coughs> Jeff, you see him maneuver right there to get him a throwing lane, and Duke's got a little crease, and Jeff gets it in that to him, and it's 17 to three. A Georgia boy. Well, Duke, was, Duke is a plate quarterback and wide receiver down at uh, K. Roy. That's a great play by Doug Huntley. Ooh. Look at Doug. He's Ooh. excited, and I am too. <clears throat> Another fine play right here by Craig Ogletree. And there's uh, a little quarterback. Watch his hit by Greg Staples right there. And Carlo Cheatham going to the football. Gets it. Another big play in the game. And this one right here, I guess we get, what, a field goal here? Yes. Mm. <coughs> run right, Stacey Dan Lee. There's a fine play right there, and, and uh, if, we, if we missed the block at the line of scrimmage, if we get that, and I'm not so sure that Reggie wouldn't run that one in. We get called for a clip on this play. Yeah. I'll tell you, that was a, a, the official called a clip. I'm not sure he saw the whole thing. But uh, anyway, Wynn Lyle kicks the field goal and, and it's 20 to three now. Wynn Lyle is 15 of seven, uh, uh, 15 of 18 on the year. Uh, there's a good pressure and that guy, those quarterbacks can fly, both of them. Johnson's not as quick as Jackson, but he can, he can really run. Quentin Riggins and Nate Hill make the play. Johnson again back to throw and Nate Hill did a great job of playing the screen and slid out there and Johnson didn't hit him and it makes the interception. <laughs> he was and happy. this is uh, another, that's a Georgia fan right there. She's not too happy. No. <laughs> Alexander bobbles that ball and then it hit that little crease and he can run. Vincent Jones, I believe, gets a big block. Right Vincent Jones there. right there gets two of them and Jim Thompson is downfield on the corner and there's John Hudson. <coughs> <laughs> Coach Blakeney did a great job of, uh, it was a great call under those conditions right there. We had, I think that's the only time we ran it. At Quentin again? Yes. Quentin kind of harassed them all night he long. He did. He can move. <coughs> We actually came up with a with a special plan for that two tight end offense that, that uh, Coach Hall and the defensive staff that made a big difference in the game. Taking it in again. Fourth quarter now. They're down on the goal line. <coughs> they are <laughs> having to scramble and having to move around every time. We're making them get off that spot. Fine play. Was that Kurt Crane that broke that pass up then? I believe it was. And there's Andre. Look at him. <laughs> <coughs> He's an emotional player, and again, you can see him coming. They've they've got him move. They've got him moving. And there's Craig Ogletree. I don't know that Craig actually knocked the ball. He had a hold of him. The ball comes out, and Quentin Riggin recovers it for another turnover. <coughs> Jeff hits Lawyer Tillman for a key first down in a third down situation. Georgia comes up with a big interception here. Good pressure by Georgia, and Jeff throws that ball off balance, and, and uh, Guthrie comes up with the interception, and that's <coughs> out the sideline back, and he is a great player. <coughs> they get it down on the goal line now. He actually caught that ball on his knee, and... and uh, <coughs> A little, I don't know. 
Yes, but anyway, they, they score on the next play. Go for go two, for and, two make and make it. Make it 27-11. Uh, they onside kick it, and we get it back. There's about four minutes to go in the game here. and <coughs> We come back, and we, we throw another interception. It's a third down play. <coughs> but they don't get this one in. Key defense. Goal line stand now. Curtis Stewart and Walter Reeves make the tackle on the interception, which was a big play. First down at the five. They try the halfback pass, and we got it played. And uh, a near interception. Second and five coming. Greg Staples. <coughs> good pressure, good pressure, pressure. Edward, Edward Phillips. Phillips knocks him out of bounds. Third and four. Again here, you're going to see folks come in. Good play, good tackle by Kevin Porter, and had to be uh, Craig Staples. Fourth again, down. Again, we got him contained. Crane's in his face. Crane's after him. Crane makes a hit on him. And actually, they had people downfield and whatever, but uh, and they didn't get it in. And the game is over after that. We make a first down, and there's Kurt Crane. and. Reggie Ware, two of our great seniors and senior leaders, and unbelievable. What <coughs> a big victory. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm, I'm so happy for you to win it outright, and and well, we only got one champion in the, in the conference. You are the champion of the best football conference in America. First, I want to uh, congratulate you, of course, on being the Southeastern Conference champions. I know that this is a proud day for all of you and for your university, for your entire state, and for the whole conference. And today, you know, you can stand a little bit taller than everyone else and say to yourself that you're a champion. I know you're going to have a watch on your wrist, but I think important to me as a commissioner, for the rest of your lives, you're going to have a ring on your finger that's going to say you're the best damn team in the Southeast. Well, what I'd like to know, Coach Dye, is would you all like to come to New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl? This is the official invitation. Let me tell you, we are thrilled to have Auburn as the outright champion of the Southeastern Conference. And you're going you're to have a great game with the War Eagles, the Syracuse Orange, in the Sugar. Come on down. Promise you a great time. You're going to have a ball. You know, we have a couple of guys in here that haven't won the Southeastern Conference before. Uh, Coach Sullivan, come up here, Coach. Might have been the greatest tiger of them all, but he had to depend on a bunch of little old guys like you to win the conversation. All right, and Coach Davis, where is he? Sometimes, 
sometime between now and the next 10 minutes, they need a shower. <laughs> This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye. Brought to you by Alpha Insurance, a new name for an old friend. Coca-Cola, you can't beat the feeling. Colonial Bank, you'll like our spirit. Golden Flake Snack Food, one taste and you're stuck on Golden Flake. And by Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos, the best wood you can buy for building outdoors. Now, here with Coach Dye is your host, Phil Snow. Well, if you didn't know, I guess you would gather by uh, the first part of the program that Auburn beat Alabama 10 to nothing yesterday, Legion Field, Birmingham. Complete well, victory, Coach. Well, you know, when something like that happens, you won a championship, and uh, you've got a, a Thanksgiving weekend here, and, and uh, I just look at uh, what brought that about and, and uh, the people that contributed to that championship, and... Um, I, uh, I, I personally have got so much to be thankful for. Um, Auburn University, number one, for giving me the opportunity to work there and coach there. Uh, Dr. Martin and the administrative staff, the faculty and the students, uh, and the greatest football fans in the country. Uh, the Board of Trustees for their support and help over the years. The Faculty Athletic Committee that works so closely with us. Hyman Wall, our Associate Athletic Director and the administrative staff in the Athletic Department there that have done such a great job. Our coaching staff and their wives and families that uh, support their efforts. Uh, certainly our players and the families of the players that uh, are part of the Auburn family. Sue and the kids, my wife, and uh, their love and support uh, during the tough times as well as the good times. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Rusty and Sally Dean that uh, run the dorm and so close to the players and give them a home away from home and Ms. Graves and her staff there in the dining hall. Ho uh, Hub Walter, for uh, our trainer, that has mm -hmm. meant so ma much to so many of the players and, and uh, very close to me and our mental preparation, physical and spiritual every week. Amen. <coughs> and Reverend Baggett, our chaplain, that uh, means so much to me personally and, and uh, I guess I'm selfish in feeling that away because he also means so much to our players, and, and uh, it's, just a, it's just a happy family and, and one that uh, I'm very thankful for. Okay, we'll go into the dressing room now, and uh, we'll get those showers for Coaches Sullivan and Davis and uh, see some other things, talking only to seniors today. Just uh, everybody went out there each time and was just uh, made up their mind that they weren't going to let Alabama move the ball. And we knew they had a great back in Humphreys. And what can I say? You know, these seniors and everybody else have been doing it all year. And it's just uh, one of the greatest feelings I've ever had. We did it all for Papa. We finally made it. Did we, Papa? Did your confidence build as the day went on? No. <laughs> no. You were scared. I was scared to the last whistle blew. They were hurting us at third, but, you know, we just kept getting stronger and got, got Strong, so we had to do it. Ready for New Orleans? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's great. It's great. We had a fun time out there just playing football. And, you know, what else can you say? It was great. They were good, but they weren't good enough. Was it? No, not good enough this time. It was our time tonight. We just went on. We tried. We knew we had to win. We knew we didn't want to lose or be in a tie and give nobody else an opportunity. We wanted to win it outright. You seven guys get two rings, something no Auburn player has ever done. That's a great feeling. That's, that's, that was our goal coming over here to come to Auburn, winning Southeastern Cup. We did it twice. We got two rings so far. It's great. It's what came here for, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. The whole Alabama set them out and win the SEC Championship. We did it all. I think this went swill because it's my last time around. I really do. Beating Alabama was the best thing this year, I tell you. I, uh, we worked on it all year long. You know, you think about it in January, and tonight is what makes it all worthwhile. When you're old and gray, you're looking at the ring. That's right. I can remember that for the rest of my life. I can give it, pass it on down to my grandchildren. The defense was great. You know, you look at it. The defense played great the first half. The offense came back, got the running game going the second half. And the special teams did their job in the second half. So it was a, it was a team effort, and it feels good. So that's all we've been thinking about ever since the winter workout. You know, this is something that we were striving for all year. So, um, you know, I'm just I'm 
the slide we're able to accomplish. It. I won't put my gold one right there on this finger right beside this one. I'm going to put my high school championship right there. That'll be three of them. And then you won't be able to go anywhere. Yeah, I'll be walking like this. But I'll be happy. I'll be happy. I get to go. I get to be like Fred Sumter. I'll be sure. After all things have happened this year, you worried about how you'd be remembered. Well, now you will be remembered as the third Auburn quarterback to win an SEC championship. That's how you'll be remembered, buddy. Well, I hope so. Um, it's a great moment for me and, and my family and the Auburn family. And, um, you know, I couldn't be any happier. Um, that game out there means a lot to everybody. It affects so many lives out there. And um, it's a football game, but then again, it's not just a football game. It's more than that. And you, and you learn you learn as the years go on and on. You learn that. And you learn that feeling of victory. And you learn that feeling of defeat. And then to win the conference like we did this year, you know, there's no better feeling at all. And all those pains that I've went through, you know, it's all worth it. Eastwood, Birmingham, packed house. Well, it was a Auburn, Alabama football game. That's all you can say. There's nothing like it in the, this country. And uh, the electricity and the momentum shifts and changes in that football game. As Reverend Baggett, he's always... He's always near. This is Alabama's second position <coughs> of the first quarter. Ooh. All right, Craig Oglesby makes a play, and, and uh, Alabama moved the ball on us in the first half, and that's a fine play by Robert Goff and Kurt Crane and Fernando Horn. And, but we didn't, we didn't let that guy there. Well, that's uh, Kerry Drew. Uh, we didn't let Humphrey make break the long run and throw him for us. He was for 17 yards. Going to Howard Cross and... Kurt Crane and Edward Phillips make the play. As maybe the biggest play in the game out there. It's a game of inches. A game of inches. Look how close this was. Oh, stopped them on fourth down. <coughs> Where it gets a little, but not much. Second and six coming. But Reggie really played well yesterday, and, and this is a fine play by uh, Derek Thomas, and Derek played extremely well yesterday and, and gave us a lot of problems and blocked a punt. And You're playing position football right now, aren't you, sir? Well, we're just trying to be sure that we make, give Alabama a long way to go to have to score. Mm -hmm. <coughs> As Bobby Humphrey again, we're just getting a lot of people around the ball like we have all year long. David Rocker, we're playing Rocker and Fernando Horn, two youngsters. That great play right here by Craig Ogletree. Nice. He's up third and ten. Here comes the interception. Great interception right here by Kurt Crane. I, I, Kurt Crane's got to be the defensive player of the year, or uh, defensive player of the week for the nation this week. He had two interceptions and calls fumbling 15 tackles. <coughs> and has been playing with a bad shoulder. That's, uh, that's a guy right there that's grown up a lot and fine blocked by the offensive line and Walter Reeves. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, Stacy Danley running. Jeff, Alabama did a great job of, I think, setting Jeff up for this. He hurt Georgia with it real badly, and they had obviously worked on it and did a good job of disguising the coverage and then breaking on the ball. We're in the second quarter now, Auburn with the ball. <coughs> Brings up a Second and long, and now it's third and 18. I think Alabama's right got more good football players, more good young players than anybody in our conference. They have got great, great team speed and quickness and, and uh, swarm the football, and, you know, they gave us problems. Here's a block punt, great effort by Derek Thomas. Luckily for us, it bounced out of bounds, and <coughs> we were able to hold them on four downs here and keep them out of the end zone, and First very, goal at the very nine. critical in the game. Fine play, Edward Phillips, Kevin Porter, and Kurt Crane, and Nate Hill. Second and goal Ron at the five. Ron Stallworth. <coughs> Big play Ron here. Stallworth and Nate Hill. Third and goal now. I believe Ron four. Stallworth had to play his greatest football game ever at Auburn. Here again, that's Humphrey playing. That's Edward Phillips again, Kevin Porter. Fourth, Fourth and play. one. Coverage by Kevin Porter, containment, pressure by Robert Goff. Big play. Big now play. This, 
is a dramatic drive right here. Coming Take off the goal line. 91 yards. <coughs> it makes much air. 99. Jeff right. does a great job of hitting Stacy Danley. And Stacy does a great job of getting the first down. Boy, big. Third and eight there. Big first down. Here comes the big play in the drive. A kind of a hitch and go, and Jeff puts it up to Lawyer, and he makes one of his great catches, and, and uh, Alabama gets a personal foul here and adds 15 yards to that. <coughs> That lawyer right there, he's sizing it up, look at him go up and get it. And <laughs> just something. It is something. You, and a great competitor and a great person along with it. <coughs> Alabama pressure, pressure. It gets a sack and then the piling on 15. So that, that offset, we had a holding penalty. They get a piling on penalty. So the, we actually ended up getting a first down out of it plus three yards. <coughs> Good break now. Great run, block. Look at the block by Brad Johnson. Puts it at the five-yard line. <coughs> Wishbone. We take it in from here. Good block by Lee Mark Sellers. Stacy Dunn blocking. Stacy Stacy Danley. There's the big man. And there's the freshman youngster. 7 nothing Auburn. Good pressure by Ron Stallworth. Dunn just kind of throws it up. Kurt Crane intercepts. Great lick right here by oh. <coughs> Bobby Humphrey on Kurt Crane. Yeah. And Bobby so it's... Looks, looks like he's mad with somebody. <laughs> 7 nothing at the half. We'll be back in just a minute. Auburn Skyline is getting a new addition, and it'll go a long way in improving education in our state. Steve Beverly has the story. It was in January when Governor Hunt helped scuff the earth, which will eventually result in this, the Auburn University Hotel and Conference Center. Construction is right on schedule for the center's completion in late August of next year. The complex is within quick walking distance of the key academic and administration buildings on the Auburn campus. It will in result in increased interest by firms outside of the state and coming to Alabama and particularly to eastern Alabama where this fine facility will be available. The hotel will contain 250 rooms and be flanked by a 425 person capacity banquet hall along with an auditorium and boardrooms. Dr. Ann Thompson is coordinating continuing education programs for the center. People that had not thought about the importance of lifelong learning will find it easier to come in quickly and get uh, connected with either teachers, researchers, or extension type faculty. Target date for the official opening is October 1st of next year. For the Auburn Football Review, this is Steve Beverly reporting. What a year this has been for Auburn and uh, for our, the sponsors of this well, program. Well, uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors personally, Phil, because without them we wouldn't have a show. Right. Uh, Colonial Bank, and uh, that's been with us from the very beginning, Great Southern Wood. Uh, Jimmy Rain's company in, out of Abbeville and Mobile. Coca-Cola. It's uh, in with us. Golden Flake potato chips. I believe it's that first year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Stacey Dan on a great run right here and, and, uh, and a fumble. Yeah, don't like that. <laughs> <coughs> Alpha Insurance that uh, has been with us for several years now and Stillwater's Resort. <coughs> As a defense, and you know, it's phenomenal that the amount of time we had the ball, as you can see right there. I mean, our defense came back in the second half and never played a better half of football. I think Alabama had three first downs and 36 yards total offense. <coughs> Somewhere along the way, Coach, you decided that... That guy uh, right there is, is running the football, and the offensive line, we didn't feel like we played very well in the offensive line <coughs> in the first half. This is a big first down that here. Tremendous effort on the part of Stacey Danley. To keep the ball 23 minutes out of 30 in the second half. That is tremendous. Great run right there by, by Reggie Ware. And I'm so happy for Reggie. You know, he's got that quiet strength and reserve. Great youngster. Look at that. Ron Stallworth and, and Edward Phillips. Here comes a third and six. <coughs> 
in the third. As Kurt Crane on the sack. And Ron Stallworth, they all back there. Uh, Robert Goff and Nate Hill. Another possession in the Andre third quarter Bruce. of Alabama. Throw the screen to Humphrey. Look at the people around the ball. That's the reason you don't break in long runs right there. <coughs> Great play. Another one by, by uh, Craig Ogletree. And there's David Rocker again. Tracy's got that. Well, I shouldn't say Tracy's brother. He is Tracy's brother, but he's got his own identity, and he's going to be a great player. As, again, pressure on the quarterback. Ball's tipped by Quentin Riggins. Quentin Riggins really had his played some outstanding football here late in the season. Now we're in the fourth <coughs> quarter, and this is a 15-play drive. It eats up about six or seven minutes. Again, running a draw, and we had some success running a draw against Alabama. Third and four, big play here. Great catch by Duke. Duke Donaldson had a great year for us, senior from Cairo, Georgia. Another third and eight coming here. <coughs> Tremendous pressure. Jeff gets the ball away to Lawyer, and he picks up a key first down on a third down situation. Miss a field goal, but keep the ball a long time. There's Bobby Humphrey, Kirk Crane, Edward Phillips. Third and four Andre now. Bruce. <coughs> David Smith is now the Alabama quarterback. Pressure, containment, all the things. There's Scott Austin and Alex Strong. And <coughs> he goes again, get that ball in that tight. This is a great drive here. This is a 14-play <coughs> drive to run out the clock. We get a holding penalty right here, and of course, the you know, they could call holding on lawyer about every time because they are holding him and doing everything they can do to him. I'm not talking about lawyer holding, I'm talking about folks holding him. <clears throat> Another big play. 153-yard day for that young guy. Well, it was obvious as the game went on, you know, that uh, Alabama played an awful lot of defense in the second half. We get the field goal and kind of iced it away there unless we let them run a kickoff back for a touchdown or whatever. And <coughs> he took care of that with a short kick. Right. This is a short pass right here. They do get it out of bounds, stop the clock. <coughs> Smith oh. throws to Whitehurst, and Kirk Crane makes a play, and, and uh, I hope Clay is not seriously hurt. I know that he's in the hospital, and... But uh, turnover, and Nate Hill recovers it, and Jeff Berger runs out the clock, and the game's history. And it's a big win. Auburn 10, Alabama 0. We'll return in just a moment. To pick the winner of the world's greatest football machine, the War Eagle, donated by Golden Plate. We're going to ask Nancy Crenshaw, one of our cheerleaders, to pick the winner. Reach way down in there, Nancy. And the lucky winner is E.G. Hess, Jr. of Mobile, Alabama. Congratulations, E.G. Phil, I'd like to thank you and Vic and your crew and the folks here at uh, WSFA for doing the show this year and the tremendous support you've been to Auburn University and our athletic department over the years. and uh, Labor of love. You know, well, it really is. And uh, that uh, that makes it that much more fun for all of us. Um, you know, I, I'd like to congratulate, uh, I don't know that congratulations is the white word, but uh, just to say that uh, I think that Coach Kerr and his staff and the Alabama football team had some great wins this year. And uh, I think they've done a fine job. They they uh, finished in the conference about where folks predicted they would finish they had high hopes after the tennessee game and the disappointing loss to florida and the, and we're we've got to be thankful to alabama they helped to auburn because <laughs> without their win that great win i should say in baton rouge over lsu we wouldn't be going to the sugar bowl so uh I, and i hope again that this game can grow and and mature into something that's fun for everybody in the state and we all understand that somebody's got to lose every year. Thank you, Coach. We'll be back next year with the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for being such loyal fans. The Auburn Football Review with Coach...
have shut out the Alabama Crimson Tide by the score of 10 to nothing here at Legion Field in Birmingham. The clock running down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It is over, ladies and gentlemen. Hail to the champions of the Southeastern Conference. The Auburn Tigers have defeated the Alabama Crimson Tide. 10 to nothing here at Legion Field. War Eagle. Go! They were champions in every sense of the word. And while this was their moment to savor, Auburn people everywhere shared in the joy and elation of this most unforgettable experience. champion in, in the conference. You are the champion of the best football conference in America. I'm Andy Jacob. Afraid that you're paying so much interest on your bad credit loan that you'll be in debt forever? Then call me right now for the promise. Loan Giant's new rate buster program that promises homeowners payments at 8.5% or less. You heard right. We promise that your payments will be 8.5% or less, even if your credit's bad, by calling the number on your screen. Call 800-305-9533. Welcome to the 7-Up Blind Taste Test. Go ahead, try the other one. This is rancid milk, man. What is that, dishwater? Yes, it is. Next. Not as refreshing as 7-Up, is it? More left, more right. You're sick, man. Fresh squeezed this morning. See? 7-Up tastes better. Ah, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Next. As the 1987 Southeastern Conference champions, the Auburn Tigers represented the SEC in the 1988 Sugar Bowl, January 1st at the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. This was the Tigers' third straight New Year's Day Bowl appearance and their second Sugar Bowl trip in five years. It was a fitting reward for a team that placed 10 players on the All-SEC team and led the conference in both scoring defense and rushing defense. The Tigers ended undefeated Syracuse's dream of a national championship and finished the year as one of only two SEC teams ranked in the top 10. It had been an extremely rewarding season. But even before it began, Coach Pat Dye saw this team had championship potential. You know, I had high hopes for the football team because you never know how a team is going to turn out until you play the season, just play the schedule. And uh, I knew that we had a very, very difficult schedule starting out and ending. Right eye, combo cut back on one. Ready? This football team worked very hard to be a, a good football team, and I felt good about the senior leadership, and, uh, and, and we, we had experience in virtually every position. Green, go get it, everybody! The team, too, sensed its potential and realized early in the offseason it would take more dedication and an even greater effort than 1986 to reach its goals in 87. Well, I think there's a lot of togetherness on this team because, you know, everybody on the team last year knows how close we were to being 11-0 going into the bowl game. You know, we lost, you know, two games very close by a point and uh, two or three points another game. And everybody doesn't want that to happen this year. They, they've got, exp they're, you know, learned a lesson from that. And uh, I think every game they know what's on the line, really. 
preseason hopes and dreams faced reality September 5th. With a national television audience watching on ESPN and the largest crowd to ever watch a football game in the state of Alabama, Auburn put it on the line against Southwest Conference Power Texas at Jordan-Hare Stadium. The Longhorns, under new coach David McWilliams, were an unknown quantity. So Coach Dye worried his team could be walking into a trap. Instead, Auburn carried out an ambush of Wild West proportions. A swarming, relentless defense created four Texas turnovers and held the Longhorns to just three points the entire game. They gave the Tigers offense opportunities which they capitalized on eagerly. Sophomore wide receiver Alexander Wright exploded for two touchdowns. One on a 29-yard reverse, the other on a 49-yard pass from Jeff Berger that put the finishing touches on a 31-3 victory. Perhaps most impressive about this season opening win was the intensity of Auburn's defense. This superbly talented group lived up to its preseason expectations and showed the promise of having the kind of leadership and motivation it would take for this team to win a championship. Going into this year, we felt like we had to win the big games, that we had the people to do it. And uh, Coach Dyes said that he felt like that you know, this was probably one of the most talented football teams he had, and we knew that if we did play together and uh, we had a few breaks, then we could go all the way. And uh, that's just what we work towards each week. The football savvy of All-America linebacker Kurt Crane was vital to the Tigers' success. The team leader in both tackles and interceptions, he set the tone for the entire defense with an intelligent but aggressive style of play. I think that we go into each game knowing that we're going to win the contact part of it because uh, we take a lot of pride in that. Coach Dye talks to us each week about if we win the contact part, we're going to win the football game. And uh, we've got guys back there that really want to hit people. And uh, great defenses, that's the mental outlook that they take each game. And it's not so far as wanting to hurt somebody, but so far that you want to hit them hard enough where um, you know they're going to cough the football up or make a mistake and help your team to win. One of the most fearless hitters on the team was strong safety Greg Staples. Thrust into the starting spot the week prior to the season, Greg responded by leading the defensive backs with 58 tackles for the season. He was part of a secondary that blended youth and experience into a highly effective unit. Junior Carlo Cheatham at free safety was consistently at the right place at the right time. On the right corner, senior Alvin Briggs used his quickness and experience to frustrate quarterbacks and receivers alike. The glue that held this unit together was all-SEC cornerback Kevin Porter. A four-year starter, Kevin consistently made the big plays in the big games. But he gives a lot of the credit for the secondary success to his friends on the defensive line. When I was being recruited out of high school, that was one of the main reasons I came to Auburn because when I looked at all these sheets, you know, of all the top recruits coming out, I'd see Nate Hill and Tracy Rocker and Ron Stallworth and all those guys were coming to Auburn. I was like, well, if I can get there and play at least a year behind those, those guys playing defense, playing on the defensive line, I can be a great guy. What was Kevin Porter's dream come true turned out to be a quarterback's nightmare. Auburn's three-man front was as good as any in the country. Its dominance of the line of scrimmage created big play opportunities for the rest of the defense. Senior Nate Hill, number 99, led the down lineman in tackles with 88. 
if there was one product or service whose praises I would sing, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's been a lifesaver for me. I never would have thought I would get cancer at age 30. I would have thought that I would never um, do a commercial, but if by someone my age being in a health insurance commercial made one young person say, you know what, I probably need to have that. That would be a nice thing. I would say not only get health insurance, but be sure it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. My name is Joseph Artenian, and this is my back. Clear the track, please. Scooter, this is my back. Oh, come on. Hey, this is my back. This is my back. <laughs> when I race, that's all you're going to see. Singular proudly sponsors Special Olympics. With your $20 donation, you get this exclusive plan plus an internet-ready phone. Singular Wireless, what do you have to say? <laughs> the Auburn offense, often the grateful beneficiary of the defense's heroics, possessed a knockout punch of its own. With all SEC quarterback Jeff Berger at the helm and a deep core of talented receivers on hand, the Tigers would rely on the passing game more than ever. From the season's opening kickoff, they came out throwing. While the defense was shutting out Kansas in week number two, Berger was throwing to 10 different receivers, putting 49 points on the board. Jeff had his best day of the year in a 48 to 15 blowout of Vanderbilt. He hit on 14 of 18 passes that day and threw two touchdown strikes. At season's end, he was named SEC Player of the Year after virtually rewriting the Auburn record book. In total, he set seven new passing marks, erasing many established by 1971 Heisman Trophy winner Pat Sullivan. His performance was complemented by the superb effort of Auburn's receivers. Senior Duke Donaldson emerged as the team's leading receiver, frustrating defensive backs with his sure hands and quick feet. At tight end, the Tigers were blessed with an all-SEC performance by 6'4 junior Walter Reeves. Wide receiver Freddie Wigan displayed big play potential, averaging more than 20 yards per reception and catching a 33-yard scoring pass in the Tigers' win over North Carolina. The man the Tigers counted on most when the chips were down was Lawyer Tillman. This all-SEC wide receiver dazzled opponents with his speed and leaping ability. Anytime he touched the ball, he posed a threat to put points on the board. The passing game enabled the Tigers to come from behind, to strike from anywhere on the field, and to operate a highly efficient two-minute drill. Never would this be of greater significance than in the game that marked the end of the Auburn-Georgia Tech series, the nation's 10th oldest. On this day, Jeff Berger would complete more passes than any quarterback in Auburn history. But with just four minutes to go, the Tigers were down by three, 91 yards away from a touchdown. Still, Jeff Berger was confident the Tigers could do the job. During the Georgia Tech drive, you know, I kept thinking to myself, this is the easiest time for us to score um, because they were really backing off on us and uh, giving us a lot of things. And, and uh, it was just a matter of us going out there and doing it. In the end, Berger looked for Tillman for the win. A catch that was vintage lawyer put Auburn in the lead with 24 seconds left. But it wasn't over yet. Strom sets up, throws, pass is deflected into the hands of Andre Bruce. Bruce at the 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Auburn! Andre Bruce not only put the finishing touches on a great come-from-behind victory, 
but he also capped off one of the most prolific single game individual performances in Auburn history. Against Tech, Andre tied an SEC record with three interceptions. He also recorded three quarterback sacks and forced a fumble leading to the Tigers' first touchdown. This All-America outside linebacker, who was perhaps the most dominating defensive player in the nation, loved to have a quarterback in his sights. But Andre wasn't the only Auburn outside linebacker to project a kind of seek out and destroy attitude. Sophomore number 94, Craig Ogletree, emerged as the season progressed. Juniors number 48, Alvin Mitchell, and number 90, Brian Smith, both thrived on contact. And inside linebacker number 41, Quentin Riggins, matured into one of the team's leading tacklers. But the man who held this unit together, along with Kurt Crane, was senior Edward Phillips. His unique leadership abilities had helped mold the unit together. This was his last chance for the championship. He wasn't about to let it slip away. With the 20 to 10 victory over Georgia Tech, Auburn was 5-0-1, and, and apparently on a roll. But in week number seven, Coach Dye knew the Tigers' character would be put to a critical test. Quarterback Jeff Berger was unavailable against Mississippi State, so untested sophomore Reggie Slack was elevated to the starting spot in a must-win conference game. He had learned his lessons well, and he responded with a sparkling performance, throwing for 185 yards and three touchdowns. Overall, the Tigers' offense put forth its most balanced effort of the year, and tailback Harry Mose became the first Auburn back to rush for more than 100 yards in a game this season. With the 38-7 win, Auburn was poised for a run at the Southeastern Conference Championship. But they still had yet to navigate what SEC Coach of the Year Pat Dye had termed, Amen Corner. Well, Amen Corner, I, I guess I called it that last year. And uh, you know, we play Florida, Georgia, and Alabama in the Southeastern Conference every year at the end of our conference schedule. And, uh, We've only beaten those three in the same year one time, and that was in 83. And, uh, of course, we lost to Florida the last three years. Not an easy road to the Sugar Bowl, for sure. But this team had the talent and the leadership to pull it off. The Tigers met Florida Halloween night, an evening usually reserved for trick-or-treating. But there would be no tricks tonight. Only a hard-hitting, gut-wrenching battle in the trenches. Well, we knew we could play with them. We knew it was going to be tough against, you know, the Florida's defense. But it's like Coach Dye always says, you know, you hit them and take some out of them every play, and then in fourth quarter, you're on them. A record crowd at Jordan-Hare Stadium and a national television audience watched a near-flawless performance by Auburn's offense. It began inch by inch and yard by yard, but ended in the Tigers' total domination. A third quarter touchdown strike to Lawyer Tillman severely hurt the Gators. The world is better. 
are people who want to silence your voice to deny you your right to a jury trial. If you were injured or cheated, these powerful special interest groups want to make sure nothing can be done. There is someone who can help. Archie Lamb earned his reputation by making sure the people of Alabama can be heard. Millions of Americans have died fighting for your right to a jury trial. I'm Archie Lamb, and I'm committed to ensuring that every Alabama citizen gets what they deserve, their day in court. This is Bill. Bill is installing a new belt on his car. The belt he purchased isn't exactly right, but it seemed like a bargain, and Bill's determined to get it on there. That one might be a little tight, Bill. Here's the deal. At Napa, we not only carry the right part, we've got the know-how to make sure that's what you leave the store with. The road to the Sugar Bowl next travel through Athens, Georgia, where the Bulldogs were guarding their home turf with grim determination. But Auburn's defense was just as grim and just as determined. They simply manhandled Georgia at the line of scrimmage, disrupting the offense and creating turnovers. Auburn's offense gladly took advantage of every opportunity. The Tigers put the game out of reach with a 17-point explosion in the third quarter that began with Duke Donaldson's touchdown reception. Nate Hill then stepped in front of a Georgia pass to set the stage for an electrifying run by Alexander Wright. Berger, toss sweep, now they're gonna run the reverse. It is fumble, Wright got it back, Wright's gonna run with it, 25 to 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Auburn! Now with the momentum of a steamroller, the Tigers were just one game away from the SEC title. Navigating Amen Corner had been difficult, but it would have been impossible without the development of Auburn's offensive line and emergence of a solid running attack. Injuries had slowed the progress of the Tigers' young backs, but by season's end, they were running with confidence behind an offensive line led by All-American Stacy Searles. Stacy Searles has been a great football player and a starter for us for four years. And has played, he played this year in the first four, three or four games of the season when most people wouldn't even been on the field. He played with a broken hand and a badly sprained ankle and knee. So, uh, you know, I've got tremendous respect for him as a man, as a person, as a leader, and a tremendous competitor. Lineman Rodney Garner, Stacy Dunn, Jim Thompson, John Hudson, and Eric Floyd became more and more cohesive as the season progressed and played their best when it counted most. To win a championship, it's not enough to play good offense and defense. Your kicking game must also be solid. Freddie Wigand returned this punt 69 yards for a touchdown versus Kansas. SEC punter Brian Schulman was the most effective in the conference. And place kicker Wynn Lyle, after walking on a year ago, became the team's leading scorer and was honored as the top kicker in the SEC. Finally, it was time to meet Alabama. Auburn, Alabama. A Southern tradition, a Deep South war. The SEC title was at stake. So was the reputation and pride of their football team. Being from Georgia at first, it took me a while to realize how big that game was. And, you know, after that first game, we lost. And I've never had a feeling like that in my life. And, you know, we lost two in a row, and it was really tough. 
and you know it made the off season so hard and you know everybody's just got a bad attitude if you lose the Alabama game. And then last year when we won, I've never had a feeling so high as that. You know, and it is a great feeling to beat Alabama and you know, really the game is too big because of all the hype. You know, for players, you know, it's another game. But we know we have to live with all the people it means so much to and you know, you've got to beat Alabama. From the outset, it was apparent that this would not be a high-scoring affair. A price would be paid for any points put on the scoreboard. Auburn's defense denied the Crimson Tide on two critical fourth down tries in the first half, keeping Alabama off the scoreboard. Time winding down in the second quarter, the Tigers' offense finally broke free on a 98-yard drive. A pass to Lawyer Tillman provided the spark. From there, the rest came on the ground. Unbalanced line left, pitch to Harry Moe, tries to get outside, looks for Rome, he's got Rome, he's in, touchdown Auburn! The Tigers played like true champions in the second half, with fullback Reggie Ware and tailback Stacy Danley pounding out first down after first down. Danley, the Tigers' leading rusher in 87, gained a career-high 157 yards against the Tide. Auburn controlled the ball 23 of the second half's 30 minutes and ran 48 offensive plays to Alabama's 17. Time and time again, it was three plays and out for the Crimson Tide. With 123 left in the fourth quarter, Win Lyle seal the victory. The Auburn Tigers were the champions of the Southeastern Conference again. And they had defeated Alabama for the fourth time in six years. That game right there means a lot to everybody. It affects so many lives out there. And um, it's a football game, but then again, it's not just a football game. It's more than that. And you, and you learn you learn as the years go on and on, you learn that. And you learn that feeling of victory, you learn that feeling of defeat. And then to win the conference like we did this year, you know, there's no better feeling at all. This was a special moment for all Auburn people. And today, you know, you can stand a little bit taller than everyone else. Great to have lips. Must be great to have lips. It must be good to smile. It must be great to have lips. If I could have one sip, I'd even trade my wings for just, just a little while. Oh, Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. You make the world taste better. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. Oh, come on, man. That's got to be worth a drop. This is Bill. Bill is installing a new belt on his car. The belt he purchased isn't exactly right, but it seemed like a bargain, and Bill's determined to get it on there. That one might be a little tight, Bill. Here's the deal. At Napa, we not only carry the right part, we've got the know-how to make sure that's what you leave the store with. The surgery went fine. Grandma just needed a chance to recover. Her doctor wanted to keep her for a couple of more days, but the HMO wouldn't pay for it, and we didn't have the money. But she wasn't well enough to go home. The next day, she was so sick, we had to rush her back to the hospital. Now they aren't sure if she's going to make it. The waiting is agony. Why did this have to happen? This didn't have to happen. I'm Archie Lamb. Don't you think your doctor should have the final say in your family's medical decisions? Join us now in the fight for sensible HMO reform.